Salam Walikum Shabbat! I want you to be loud. I want you to be proud. It's time to be brave. Are you ready? vision, determination, inspired a generation. It gave a new dream for the youth of his homeland. It created a groundbreaking revolution in the sports. When a vision is strongest, nothing can stop its far-reaching impact. And the vision was three powerful letters. KHK And today his vision is far reaching the valor 
and pride of his homeland is far-reaching. Today, his vision is defining the future of a new generation. A generation of heroes and of gladiators. Today is the day of hope for the hopeless. The day KHK will inspire the souls to fight back, irrespective of what they are and who they are. Many will emerge as heroes. This will be a new era of true heroes and gladiators. When he stood in the front and led them, they called him the Prince of Gladiators and Heroes. In 2016, a vision revolutionized mixed martial arts in the Middle East. It all started with the evolution of MMA in a small island in the Middle East. The magnificent kingdom of Bahrain, a land of ancient glory and bravery, thriving under great leaders and visionaries. The country is now home to the largest MMA promotion in the region, Brave Combat Federation. And the kingdom became the first ever country outside of the United States that featured the IMF World Championships. His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa and his true warrior spirit envisioned the growth of MMA in the region. He believed in the glory of the sport of mixed martial arts and facilitated the best MMA facility in the land. Along with brave President the Hawk, Muhammad Shaheed, in the shortest span of time we grew stronger. We grew bigger. This is a story of the fastest growing MMA promotion in the world. This is the story of Brave Combat Federation.
minutes, one minute, and counting. is growing. MMA promotion in the world returns to action for Brave CF48, Arabian Night, with an explosive fight card for the world to see. Tonight, we make history. Brave Combat Federation 48 is live right now. First off, we'd like to send our best regards to His Royal Highness, Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, we're all grateful for the incredible things you've done, changing the landscape of mixed martial arts worldwide and making the Kingdom of Bahrain the epicenter for combat sports. His Highness, you are a true life changer and dream maker, and we're blessed and honored to carry out your vision. Also, I'd like to send a shout out to Brave CF President The Hawk, Mohammed Shaheed, the leader of Brave Combat Federation, and the man that turns His Highness's vision into reality. Finally, a huge thank you to our gold sponsor, Sibarco Car, our partners, Green Hill, the Bahrain Olympic Committee, the Bahrain Mixed Martial Arts Federation, and our hospitality partners, Nordic Palace and Spa, and our beverage partner, Arwa. Also, a huge thank you to B1, our hygiene partners, making sure everyone is safe in and out of the cage. And a special shout out to Toyota Bahrain, our official automotive partner for their support of Combat Kingdom. Before we begin, I have one question for you and one question only. For all those watching in the magnificent Kingdom of Bahrain and the millions watching around the world, Brave Nation! Are you ready for war? This bout is sponsored by Brave Energy Drink. Only the best to power your best effort. Fortune favors the brave. Sanda world champion Mohsen Mohamed Safi is ready to make a splash in MMA when he meets Bishi Zakaria, an outstanding grappler looking to make a name for himself. Coming up next, a lightweight contest between Mohsen Golden Boy Mohamed Safi and Bishi Zakaria kicks off Arabian Night. Here we go, Brave Nation, our first fight of the evening. Three five-minute rounds in a lightweight bout. Introducing your first warrior. 
fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of one win and no losses. He stands 177 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 70.8 kilograms. Representing Ultimate Fight Academy and fighting out of Morocco, please welcome Beachy Zakaria. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, this man's a mixed martial artist with his professional debut tonight. He stands 171 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 70.8 kilograms. Fighting out of Iran. Give it up for Mohsin, golden boy, Mohammed Tayyifi. Your referee is the bandit, Decky Larkin. Big thanks to our gold sponsor, Sabarco KAR Group. That's Khaled Abdul Rahim Group. Big thanks for your gold sponsorship. The tail of the tape there, Bitchy. Zakaria, slight height and reach advantage. We are all set. Zakaria in the blue corner. Mohsin Mohammed Saifi in the red. Schedule for three, five minute rounds. Me, Brian Lacey, alongside Phil Campbell and Kirik Janess calling the action. Looked like a little bit of a clash of heads there right from the get go. And Big winging shots being thrown here by Mohamed Saifi. Absolutely. And you can tell Bichi Zakaria will want to close that distance, take that world class striking away. Nice movement, though, there from Mohsin. Mohamed Saifi is showing some outstanding uh, takedown defense right now, gentlemen. And I don't think that Zakaria had anticipated that coming into the fight. Oh, oh he got the right shot. hand. Boom! Oh, Referee's tight on him. Oh, he landed another big shot. That's oh, it. Oh, Bitchy looking to survive. And That's he's oh, He is out. Deki Larkin with the stoppage. Mohamed Saifi with the first win in his mixed martial arts debut. That is absolutely huge. That is why they call him the Golden Boy. That, the anticipation of this debut. When you talk about that takedown defense, it was his angles, his movements. But then when he connected with those right hands, Bitchy did so well to survive for that long, but it was only a matter of time. Fantastic stuff from Mosi. He always had a strike loaded on the break from the clinches, from those engagements. Always had something to put right in the face. And that's a huge shot coming right over the top. And from there, it was pretty much rudimentary for referee Deggy Larkin to stop the fight. Big respect to Beachy. He fought the game he could. He tried to stay in the inside. The problem when you fight a Sanda fighter is there is no outside. It's a unique style of striking. They can kick from halfway, three quarters of the way across the cage. There is nothing to do but engage. Beachy engaged, and unfortunately, he got, shot, got caught. Oh, and that head movement as well from O.C. to Find the angle, come over the top with the right hand, and look at this, the left connects. Deki Larkin steps in. Wow, what a start to Brave 48. My goodness, the golden boy with a highlight reel finish in his first professional MMA fight. And he was just watching the replay there, taking it all in, admiring his handiwork. And Brian, you would do exactly the same, wouldn't you? <laughs> I would be watching that on repeat again and again and again. Fantastic stuff. The Iranian fighter. Bichi Sicaria caught some good shots, but he is up and standing. He's completely lucid. No damage done. Make it official. Let's hand it to Carlos Kramer. All right, Brave Nation. What a way to start our historic Brave CF48 Arabian Night. This comes to an end at 43 seconds of the very first round. Your winner by TKO, Mohsin, Golden Boy, Mohammed Sayyifi. Wearing that Iranian flag, flag proudly. Such a stunning performance, barely broke a sweat. Phil, just what's the, what is the potential of this man? Coming from such a, a high accolade in the Wushu Sand and now showing what he can do in the uh, brave well, cage. What he's illustrated now is the diversity of his movement. He's not just a linear striker, and that lends itself to defending the takedown, creating angles to land those big shots. The sky's pretty much the limit in Arab MMA for this month. <laughs> Love and Brave are uh, very lucky to have him debuting here, and you look at that roster of fighters, the lightweight division there, Kirik, the potential for so many good matchups.
Let me do that for just a sec, but I'm gonna jump into the Green Hill replay. We see that double plum stopping the grappling attack, and it's immediately followed up with a clean one, two, and from there, big overhand right, drops Beachy, and it does not stop. Referee Decky Larkin keeping an eagle eye in the action, and he sees enough to stop it just like that. Unreal stuff, fantastic debut. And Beachy, again, credit for surviving so long. He was trying to find a way out, but the punches just kept coming. And that was the one he dropped. Decky Larkin had seen enough steps in, calls it, and that's all it meant. Boom, it gets sweeter every time you see it, Kirik. It does. We've had cases so many times in mixed martial arts of fighters punching themselves out. They think they have their opponent hurt. They let the hands go completely. They don't stop the fight and they've got nothing left. You are looking at a supremely conditioned golden boy, as you can see, with sheer, utter, and total confidence in himself. All right, Brave Nation, let's continue this historic show and welcome our next Warriors into the cage. This bout is three five-minute rounds in a featherweight battle. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist making his professional debut. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 66 kilograms. Fighting out of Kurdistan. Please welcome Ramyar Lokman. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist making his professional debut. He stands 164 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 66 kilograms. Representing KHK MMA and fighting out of the magnificent Kingdom of Bahrain. Give it up for Abdullah Eto Ali Aku. Your referee is the bandit, Decky Larkin. Both fighters are kitted out in Green Hill, our apparel sponsor, and in my opinion, the finest combat sports gear in the world. Thank you, Green Hill. Hey, Mark Lukman will have a nine centimeter height advantage over his opponent, Abdullah Ali Akub. Ali Akub in the red corner, Reyma Lukman in the blue. The fight that almost wasn't is underway. Oh, big shot there from oh. Abdullah straight off the bat. They are shooting right from the get-go, turning this into a firefight. The KHK man has one underhook, trying to dig for the double underhooks. We know exactly where he wants to take the fight, gentlemen. Extremely strong as well. Look at that underhook, turns against the cage, looking to get it down to the mat. Can he make this a successful takedown? Far from Lookman, but... Look at the transitions there. Abdullah is relentless with this. Now on the back, may look for the shelf takedown. Oh, oh beautiful work. May switch to the head-arm triangle. Forgoes it for dominant position. Impressive stuff from the start there, Kirik. It is Lupin now wants to dig for an underhook. With that holding onto the head in that, that fashion is not likely to allow him to either stand up or otherwise secure the control he needs to, to stay in this fight. Right thing though, he was trying to get the hand down there, put a little bit of pressure on the hip and try and scoot back in and get his half guard back. But right now he's in danger of giving up the back. It really is a pick your poison type position right now. Does well to get guard. And this is grueling stuff as well between them. And Abdullah on 12 hours notice basically. You've got to wonder if he can keep up this sort of pressure, this sort of pace. Must be said, there is a distinct difference between staying in shape and staying in fight shape. Settling in that position, happy to land his strikes inside the guard. Nice work having that hand around the hip, immobilizing the movement of Lukman. Lukman smartly trying to control the head to deny his opponent the leverage to throw powerful shots. He then attempted a hip sweep, trying to turn his opponent over and tried to use that to stand up, but thus far has been wholly unsuccessful. A slow, methodical pressure that he's putting on. It's almost sequential. He gets the position, solidifies the position, and then works with the strikes from there. That is a style that KHK has become so well known for. And over our shoulder, I'm almost scared to look back as Elder Elderov. And this is a student. He is very just happy with us, how far he, as far as how he works, his dedication to this sport, and how far he's grown as well as skill set. Eto is now fully past the guard. I expect the punishment to only increase from here. 
fair to say, it was all sequential from being inside the guard to half guard, then to, sorry, from being inside the guard to, to half guard to side control. All very, very smart. Oh, there from the bottom, Raymar throwing those short knees to the midsection, but he just needs to be concentrating on not get, taking damage and getting back to his feet, and there he does it. They get taken straight back down again. Hands clasped here by Abdullah. Maybe we're seeing just from Raymar and what he's trying to do in this position. He's not fighting those hands whatsoever. He's just throwing those elbows. Maybe a little hole in the game that he has to fill. Doesn't really, or he hasn't really had an answer right now for the grappling dominance of Abdullah Ali Yakub. We were concerned about Ali Yakub's conditioning, taking the fight on such short notice, but being taken down and then getting back up to standing is extremely debilitating from a, a, the physical perspective. I don't believe that the KHK fighter is at the uh, disadvantage now in terms of his conditioning, in terms of his endurance. Early Lookman was trying to do the right thing. He was trying to break the grip, so he does know what he has to do there. And right now he's in a bit of a 50-50 dogfight. And no, Ali Akub working towards that back. Relentless pressure. Oof. Oh, nice he exchanges. He's on the back foot, though, Ali Akub. He's throwing some nice punches as he's moving backwards. Again, takes that back almost effortlessly, like a hot knife through butter. That's what I mean, Phil, when you look at the way that he's unaware that that's, that is going to happen to him. That is a natural progression. You've got to be aware of that to stop it happening. Oh, nice That's a big shot. shot. But right now, it looks like he's going to be on the end of a takedown. But no, Lookman does well to stay upright. Stands at the second bout here at Brave 48. And it's the little things like not digging in for the underhook that Lookman's missing here in his game. Not even resisting the hand fighting. He's letting his wrist, but oh, big oh, knees to the midsection. Solid knees coming up the middle there, Kirik. Those knees don't just hurt. They, of course, if they go a little higher, have the potential to stop the fight, but it's also money in the bank. When you hit the body, it takes much longer to recover than does a headshot. Take down from Ali Al Yakub there. Oh, sorry, Abdullah Al Yakub there. A nice response from him, though. He took those knees, Phil. Straight away went for the takedown, and again he's in this position. He gets there so easily. Lookman can't just accept the position and try and land shots and elbows from the back. This is not, it's not effective striking. Absolutely. No, gentlemen, this is something you do not often see. The fighter is actually looking at himself in the big screen to try and get a sense of whether his opponent's on the left or the right, trying to take shots as he's able to. He is of Roger Huerta back in the day, gentlemen. <laughs> And let's have a look through this action. Phil, talk us through this. Some huge shots landed in the opening stances. And Abdullah Ali Yakub was very much happy to initiate in the clinch. And it was all about that back position throughout the, the flow and cadence of the fight. And the dominance of the KHK man on the ground was tantamount to physical poetry. Gentlemen, we, we in agreement. Abdullah Ali Yakub is up 10 to 9 so far. Well, for 12 hours notice and to step in and put in a performance like that in the first round, I, I agree with that. I would say he has uh, certainly had the best positions. Took that big knee, though. But in between rounds now, uh, Phil, especially when you look at Raymar Lukman, there is an obvious issue with position. One position that keeps repeating itself, that keeps taking him out of his where he wants to be in the fight. What do you tell your fighter? Because you can't train it, you can't drill that now in that one minute. Yeah. What, what do you do? Get on your bike, no single shots, don't load up on your shots, try and get your combinations off, but lateral movement instead of being a static position for your opponent to engage with. Oh, a nice That's a overhand, huge shot right. to start, and again. Oh, he's oh. caught him again. Raymar has a chin on him. Doesn't he just? What a start to round number two. Abdullah Ali Akub. Connecting twice with that big overhand right. I was looking a little bit static. He's wild. I watched his first fight as well. He has such a forward pressure style. He doesn't mind taking shots if he can connect. And we've shown he's shown just there in that opening 20 seconds he can take a shot. Issue with that forward, ever forward momentum style is you're almost inviting the takedown, but Abdullah happy to land shots on the back. Now looking for the takedown. This is what it's about, mixing it up, Kirik. It is indeed. Ali Akub is now trying to get his hands together. If he can clasp those fingers together into a Greco grip, he'll be able to level change a little bit, put his opponent down on the ground. It's infinitely much harder if the hands are not connected together, and they are not yet, but he does it. Snatch double. 
Bookman doing the right thing by trying to post on the hand and get up, and maybe within the best interest of Ali Yakub to, to grab that rest, just as I say, he does so. That first minute was furious. There was just a relentless back and forth, shot for shot between the two. Do you think that's part of the plan, Phil? Do you think that the Reymars just want them to put the pressure on? Well, as, as I said, the danger of doing that against somebody who's so talented, as we see just transitioning into the mount beautifully, is you're inviting that engagement into the grappling realm where, where they feel most comfortable. Oh. It's raining elbows, gentlemen. Big elbows as well. This as is both hooks in. Fantastic stuff from Abdullah. What a story this would be on essentially 12 hours notice. Oh, and but there, Lukman. after taking some heavy elbows, Reymar Lukman reverses the position. That could be oh. a little bit of fatigue there from Abdullah. Nice work from Abdullah, though. Had the knee shield, used it to push away and stand back up. But now everything on the feet seems to be coming just a little bit more laboured from Abdullah. Very sweet technique from Lukman. Used his head to push his opponent back. Used that to set up a knee. Don't see it very often. It was, as I said, sweet as sugar. And again, these winging shots from both fighters. Now the pressure picking up. Looking for the knee, Lukman. Oh, oh connects. I just glanced. If that had been flush, it'd oh, been game over. Oh, just misses again. Abdullah now looking tired, Phil. Uh, surely fatigue has to play a part in this so far. As I said, the difference between being fit and being fight fit is evident now in the fight. With Lukman, you talk about his technique he, to get back to the feet. I would have liked to see him keep a little bit more distance there, Phil. He almost walked himself into this clinch position, which is where Abdullah wants it to be. In the cleanse position, he's changing levels. He has the hands connected, scores the takedown. And not only is this a dominant position for Ali Yakub, it's also a position for him to get a little bit of a breather, to solidify the position, get some air in his lungs, and then work. Again, just steps over into the mount position effortlessly. Well, not fully secured yet. I believe we're going to shortly see those hips sink down. This is one difference between training on the mats and up against a cage. Even the positioning game is significantly more difficult when you're jammed up against that, that Brave Combat Federation cage. Right in front of his corner there. They're guiding him through this. See if he can let off some more of those big, heavy elbows. One minute, 25 seconds left in the second round. Little bit of a cage generalship we're seeing here. When you take an opponent down, it's always extremely beneficial to do so in front of your own coach. Your opponent can't hear from his corner, and you can hear everything coming straight to your ears, through your brain, and out your fists. Next there was working body, body, head. You have to give credit to Lookman for constantly trying to post and get back to his feet. Just the, the, the tenacity of the young man and the chin on him as well. He's eating some huge shots, and somehow now... Once again, trying to avoid the takedown. Can he stop it? Other fence grab. Oh, a warning there from Deki Larkin. Back position being established. Lukman now working on the hands, trying to break the hands before standing up. Still trying to strike. I think it's a little early for him to be trying to hit back. That body lock is not very tight, is it, Phil? There is, even the hands are, uh, aren't together. There is space for him if Lukman knew what he was doing to explode, turn, and get out. I think it's just a position that he's not familiar with, not coming from an MMA background. I don't think this is one of the things that it, it, instinctively, when someone clasps their hands, you go down to try and break that grip to get an underhook to turn in, and he's not doing any of that. Seconds of the second round. Exactly, Phil. Once a fighter gets into deep waters, once they get in towards the end of the second round, people are always going to fall back on what their training is day to day. This man's training is not in grappling day to day. Set for a third and final round in this contest. Again, this is the fight that almost wasn't. Abdullah Ali Akub giving a fantastic showing for himself. Look at those right hands coming over the top. Talk us through some of this, Phil. Absolutely huge. And you see, even as he's moving backwards, Ali Yakub, he's eating a couple of punches, but he's still throwing punches at nauseam. Scores the takedowns. I think that was maybe three or four solid takedowns. You have to give credit to Lukman in absorbing the punishment in these positions and then working to his feet. What I thought was very telling was the fact that as soon as the round ended, Ali Yakub dropped straight down. Dropped straight down onto his backside, took some very deep breaths. Lukman casually walked back to his corner. The third round is without question going to be the most telling of the fight, Brian.
are set for that third round. Cannot wait. What are you expecting in this third and final five minutes, Kirik? The great wrestling coach, Dan Gable, always said the first round is won by talent, the second round is won by conditioning, and the third round is won by heart. Whoever has the greater heart is going to win this round and the fight. A little bit of a uh, <laughs> hand, helping hand from the corner there of Abdullah, getting him a few extra breaths of air before this third and final round starts. Abdullah Ali Akub in the red corner, Raymar Lukman in the blue. We are underway once more. Heart on display, Brave Nation. I'm expecting some shots from Raymar. Circling now. Cannot afford to get caught against the cage and give up that back position once again, Phil. And are looking relatively tentative right now because they both know that if Lukman is to maraud forward, Ali Yakub could eat some shots, but also if he's to maraud forward, he could get taken down. HK Fighter is showing intense focus in his eyes. I don't know if it's clear through the television screen, Brave Nation, but the fighters are right above us, and Ali, Ali, <coughs> Ali Yakub is now right on top of us with the eye of the tiger. Almost feels like they've had a gentleman's agreement or something. We'll just take another extra minute yeah, we'll and then we'll get on with it. We'll give each other, give each other a decent <laughs> breath, but that, that right hand it's, of, it's of absolutely Lukman is absolutely cocked, isn't it? Yeah, he's ready, just almost, we, almost inviting the advancement of Ali Yakub. Yeah, of round number three. Circle, circle. You. If it continues in this vein of fashion, could referee Dekki Lorgan potentially step in and, and say that they need to engage a little bit more? 100%. He's already vocalized that as you were saying that, Phil. And now they do. Now stepping forward is Lukeman. For me, smothers his work a little bit, Phil. Look, he's, he's given up the takedown, that distance, that engagement. Oh, big when, takedown again. And this is exactly where Ali Yakub wants to be. What we are witnessing is the power of Dagestani wrestling. Fantastic takedown. I expect to see it furthered momentarily. And this position once again, Phil. The back take, just sitting there. So resting his hands on the clasped hands of his opponent as opposed to trying to push down, break the grip. And the grip doesn't look that strong. There it's, it's firmly gable, but at points it's almost loose, almost open. There is an exit. It's not that hard to break it as you can see. Now he's turning to him. Doubles here, but splitting the base is Lukman. Abdullah Ali Akub who gives distance. Lukman stepping forward. Up there, and again, winging shots. It's again walks straight into that, now back to the mat. He walks himself into the takedown. Absolutely. There was a little bit more of awareness. Instead of marauding straight forward, if he was using his angles, trying to pivot off on the lead foot, but right now he finds himself in the precarious position of having his back taken. Oh, and that's straight under. Hooks he can in. get that. Choke is in. Oh, he needs to fight. It's in tight. He's doing the right thing. He's fighting the top hand here. He needs yes. to bring that hand right down to his chest. And what was very impressive there with the, the takedown there of Abdullah was he had to make the adjustment to fully take the back. He put the underhooks under, gripped the shoulders, worked his way back up, and this very quickly got under the neck. You look at the arc of Lukeman's back, he's also beginning to feel intense hip pressure moving forward. Makes it more difficult to breathe, more difficult to defend. Oh, that's under the chin the chamber again. Yep. He's holding onto that glove, Phil. He Maybe a short choke coming. He needs to be wary about crossing the feet as uh, Ali Yakub here, because I don't think Lukeman's aware of it, but there is a submission open to him from this position if he chooses to triangle those ankles. But again, that may speak to the relative lack of MMA experience coming from Ramir Lukeman. 35 seconds, what a story this will be. Abdullah Ali Akub stepping in on 12 hours notice, stepping in to make his pro debut, stepping in on a huge card. Brave 48 here at Arad Fort, and potentially right now on the back, but in the driving seat to take the victory here tonight. Ali Akub wants to make just a couple more inches distance between his opponent's hips and his. He wants to shrimp back literally just an inch or two, pull his opponent into that space, and then work on sinking that choke. Not protecting the neck at all, Phil. Oh, he's, he's almost happy to give up the neck to fight the top hand, but it's such a dangerous position to find yourself in. Oh, this is looking like it could be it. He's working back that arc, the pressure. No. Nope. But again, he's letting that forearm just quite happily slip and sit under there. Oh, oh beautiful work to transition Woo. from Lukman. 45 seconds. What an absolute war of attrition. This fight is Lukman now finds now. himself in the wow. mark. Wow. Kirik, this is such a story unfolding in front of us. I'm hugely impressed. 
by the tenacity of Lukeman. He looked to be down to me, didn't give up for a second. Awesome performance by both fighters so far. I know 20 seconds of a back and forth epic battle between these two men. Make a big knee oh. from Lukeman. Oh, just shy. Every knee has just been glancing, Brian. If one of them land up flush, it's good night. 10 seconds, who will have the last words? Stepping forward, oh, just misses oh, with the right. back oh. fist, and then comes back with a hook. What a way to Woo. finish a war. Woo. There we go, and again, Abdullah Ali Yacoub taking this fight on 12 hours notice. I did have one question going into that third round, who had the greater heart, and I now have my answer. Both of them, yes. these are two lions. You cannot separate them for her, and the judges will have to separate them. Oh, you would not want to. And gentlemen, it wasn't entirely pretty the whole time, but oh. my gosh, it was entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> what it's going to come down to now is a judgment call. Some judges prefer striking. Some judges prefer the grappling aspect of mixed martial arts. There isn't a right or a wrong here. No judge's decision here is going to surprise me. And this was the nice end of the fight, the turnaround. As you said, heart on show in spades from both these athletes. Abdullah Ali Yacoub raising his hand in the Bahraini flag. Hi, has he done enough to make a, pro, a successful pro debut here at Brave 48? Lukman, more despondent of the two. And you've got to say it's that one position when you go back and you watch these fights, Phil, when he, Lukman goes back and he looks, where where do I need to grow? There's one glaringly obvious part, and that's the grappling, that back position that was so easily taken by Abdullah. Well, what that fight illustrated to me is just because you are a martial artist does not mean that you are a mixed martial artist. You need to train every facet of the game just as diligently as you do your strengths. Yeah, almost set and ready. Carlos Kramer making his way into the brave cage here. What a battle between these two warriors. Let's make them wait no more. It's time to make this one official. Let's hand it up to the roaring lion himself, Mr. Carlos Kramer. All right, Brave Nation, what an incredible bout that was. Give them a hand. Insane action at Brave CF 48. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Your first judge scores about 30-27. Your next judge scores about 30-27. And your final judge scores about 29-28 for your winner. Out of the red corner from Cage K MMA, Abdullah Atto Ali Aku. As it so often does in mixed martial arts, wrestling carries the day. <laughs> wow. Someone just got a second win from somewhere wow. down Wow. Listen, that is unreal to put on a grinding, grueling performance like that. That's an acrobatic celebration. Unreal stuff from Abdullah Ali Akub. And that was on 12 hours notice. What happens when we give this guy a full cap? Not only did he test himself there by moving into the pro ranks, but within that move from three minute rounds to five minute rounds, did all three of them in a back and forth battle like that. Just sum up that victory, Phil. That's absolutely huge. Coming on 12 hours notice to show that level of tenacity throughout the whole fight. Apart from maybe the first minute or so of the third round, they, both of these gentlemen, engaged in an all-out war. And one of the quotes he's given about why he loves this sport so much, why he finds this is his passion, this is his destiny. He says he loves the adrenaline of fighting, and my goodness, he showed it. Absolute heart, passion, technique, all of the above to bring out a performance which is earning him his first victory. What does that mean when you step in, you're stepping up, not just on short notice, but from amateur to pro to get that first win column, the first win in the win column? What we're watching here is the vision of Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa made real. This is the beginning of KHK. He met a fighter in the gym, talked to him about his life, turned out the fighter was a garbage man. He, was, he picked up refuse, and he was tired at the end of the day. He couldn't, couldn't give himself fully to training. Sheikh Holland set up a team, provides everything for these fighters to train year round, like professionals, so when it's time for them to go pro, they can do it on 14 hours notice and be victorious. And you told me, oh, let's have a look at that fantastic celebration. 
I don't know where he learned that, but you look at the style of his fighting and you talk about what they have, the facilities, but let's talk about the coaches at KHK as well. Elder, Elder. This bout is sponsored by Brave Energy Drink. Only the best to power your best effort. Fortune favors the brave. Issa Salam is looking forward to showcasing his grappling skills on his Brave CF debut. When he takes on Nassara Mohammed, widely regarded as one of Egypt's best strikers. Coming up next, Issa Salam meets Maysara Mohammed in an exciting catchweight bout of 59 kilograms. Here we go, Brave Nation. This bout is three five-minute rounds in a catchweight of 59 kilograms. Introducing your first warrior, Fighting out of blue corner, this man's a mixed martial artist with a prof professional record of four wins and no losses. He stands 169 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 58.7 kilograms. Representing Hero Academy and fighting out of Egypt, please welcome my Sarah Mohammed. And his opponent. Fighting out of the red corner, this man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of five wins and one loss. He stands 166 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 58.9 kilograms. Representing Samurai Team Academy and fighting out of Iraq, give it up for Isa Salem. Your referee is the bad. Big thanks to our amazing hospitality partner, Nordic Palace and Spa. My Sarah, slightly younger, 23 years of age, slight height advantage as well. We are set to get underway. My Sarah Mohammed in the blue corner, taking on Issa Salem in the red corner. Sarah taking the center straight away, but eats a big leg kick. Oh, just as they were being announced, he was just jumping the athleticism. He was almost, I mean, he's, he's 165 centimeters, yet he almost jumped with his hips to the top of the cage. It's phenomenal power. Phil, Phil, as you referenced, we are seeing that side stance, but the counter to that is known as to kick that calf. It's coming from that southpaw stance as well. That, that lead leg is wide open. Should Issa try and light it up? Um, trying to get a read, trying to get a tell. From Maisara, Maisara Mohammed. Out for the big body kick from Maisara. So oh, like Stone, you just look into his eyes, Phil. Maisara is absolutely in the moment. I have gauge of the distance very quickly in the fight, gentlemen. Maisara trying to ease that right lead foot to the outside of his opponent's foot. That'll set up the straight, and it will set up a liver kick. Body a little bit as Maisara. Circling to the left, Issa Salam doing the right thing away from that power hand. Oh, there's a straight left down the middle, Kirik. All set up by keeping your lead foot on the outside of your opponent's lead foot. That's what they're jockeying for here. Each fighter wants to be in the outside. That brings his best tools into play. There's that kick to the outside leg. The lead leg there of Maisara Mohammed. Tentative, but Mysara having the more effective strikes thus far. And for Mysara, really has seemed to be to try and chew up the lead leg of his opponent. And there's the charge. He looked, knew Issa was going to try it. Oh, winging shots, gentlemen. Met with fire. Big kick to the body. Now he's got hold of that leg. And he finished the single. Can he run the pipe on it? Goes up high. Needs to be wary of the neck here. Oh, has both legs. Very flagrant cage grab there by Mysara. Salam trying to take that base away. Nice balance being shown here by Mysara. Phenomenal balance and strength. Mysara is a superior athlete and he's down! Oh, that's a huge dump take down! Wow, I thought that arm might have been in trouble as it came out straight. Be wary of potential triangle here, but Mysara really needs to turn in. Or else Salem's going to find himself in that dominant position, offside control. Salem, we've already given a nod to his 
accolades as far as Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, claiming that title at just 17 years of age for national championships in Iraq. Heavy inside control, just slowly trying to maintain position and improve it. We need to see a little bit more movement here from Mysar. He was essentially flat backing there, but what he needs to do is get onto his far hip and try and work back in for the likes of the half guard of the guard. He says Salim wants to be a little more aggressive too. Grappling, you can wait for your opponent to make a mistake. Oh. That's a beautiful transition into the what back, a back take. take. I'm going to go as far as saying liquid jiu-jitsu there, gentlemen. He just moved with his opponent so beautifully, set the hooks. Oh, he has the hooks deep in, methodically working. And Mysar is probably in the deepest waters of his mixed martial arts career right now. Just trying to stuff the hand down. He may even be trying to stuff that hand down to trap it with his own leg. Yeah, he fought Mohamed Gamal for three hard rounds, got victory in the third round of that and was in some bad spots, but nothing like this this early on when they're still dry as well, Phil. Just creeping that hand underneath the neck. And whilst that might not be flush underneath the neck, he could be getting the face it's, crank it's here. It's a face, face crank, bar. gentlemen, it is. And we have seen many a man tap to the pressure of a face crank. And you look at the level of the grappling he's got. He's not doing huge movements. He's slowly working to improve that position and try and engage that choke. Not unlike a python with his prey. Oh, and now that might be under. Oh, that looks deep. He's trying to fight the top hand. Issa Salem looking for victory here in his brother. Not having any luck. That's on the chin. Couldn't tell if that was on his bicep either. Now trying to make the adjustment, feeding those fingers. Oh, but now that's slowly getting a little bit deeper. That looks like it's underneath the chin now, gentlemen. Has it right behind the neck as well. I that's think beautiful. This is over. Oh, placement. I think it's over. Oh, is he merely just a the inevitable? You can see Mysara trying to find a way to survive, but the grip gets tighter and tighter. Again, he adjusts. You now he's on the side, he may survive this. You have to give credit to the heart and staying power. Wow. He survived it. Wow. Unbelievable. Oh, he's swapped to the other side. He switched that grip to the other side, but now can he put his palms together? Has he got enough time? Wow. Round ends. And Ooh. that was phenomenal. Just survival there from Mysara. It looked deep, Phil. It looked like he was going out if he didn't tap, but it was underneath the chin. Then switch the grip to another deep rear naked choke. Now you see the opening stanzas of the round where it was Mysara kind of leading the dance in the opening stanza. But then as soon as it hit the map, Brian, Jiu-Jitsu for days. Jiu-Jitsu for days. And this was the big takedown, Kirik. Air Iraq now landing on Runway Brave. <laughs> Let's look again. That arm came Ooh. out. I thought that was a possible yeah, injury coming down there. but. We don't know that arm still could be compromised Ab moving into a second round, gentlemen. Abs it could well be. We often get soft tissue and even joint damage from takedowns. It's not immediately apparent until the following round. Survival was the name of the game at the end of that first round for Mysara. And I said it before, the last fight I watched with him with Mohamed Gamal, he was under a lot of pressure. Two rounds, he, for me, convincingly lost. And it was the third round. He was still in the fight. No quit in that fight. And again, he proved that at the end of round number one, gentlemen. Dangerous game plan to play, trying to outlast your opponent. <laughs> Psychologically, that may have been just a little difficult for Issa Salem. I believed he had the fight finished. He may well have too. To have his opponent get out can't be a good feeling. That's a great point there, Kirik, because th there is that adrenaline dump if you think you've got that victory. You pour everything you have yeah. into that squeeze. So we are underway. Round number two, Masara in the blue corner, Issa Salem in the red. Are again taking the center of the cage. Massive differences in the two worlds. Mysara standing looks so much more dangerous, but on the ground, as he said, jiu-jitsu for days for Issa Salem. Issa Salem needs to be wary of circling into that power side, that power kick of Mysara. That's a good shot to the liver. Let's say as well, Salem a little bit laboring in his, uh, in his movement, some deep breaths. As you've alluded to, that could be the adrenaline dump of thinking that you had the round finished. Not to mention the forearms get tight. That squeeze for a long time obviously is tough on the brain, but the brain recovers, the forearms don't always. Lactic acid is not your friend, and this time he's circling to that power hand. He's got to be careful. Also that high kick from Mysara. Yeah, there's potential there for a huge left kick if he's not smart. Look how fresh Mysara is as well. He looks absolutely phenomenal to say he was in complete survival mode for the last one and a half minutes of that first round. Oh, big left. Nice working work at the body, body beautifully. Mixing it up. 
Lewis. Oh, look at that high Lead, kick. Lead a hook kick, absolutely Ooh. sumptuous. Low kick likely to follow now. Oh, he's picking up the oh, pace. Oh, he lost him a little bit. One, two, down the middle. Now Salem looking for the takedown, trying to fight back. He gets caught again, Phil. Salem shook his head, and in mixed martial arts, we usually know that means, yes, you caught me. Back oh. sweep, scramble. But it would be within the interest of Masara to back off right now. You're having yes. a distinct advantage in the standing. Yes. Keep it at standing range. Land your strikes. Don't get taken down. And there's a smile in the eyes of Masara. That hook kick was beautiful just clipped the chin there then the one two wobble, wobbled Salem and that looked very labored from Salem this will be a tale of two sides snapping leg kick I saw her doing a beautiful job of going high and low in body coming in from the outside left right and center it's absolutely beautiful striking to watch when you, when you talk about that striking, Phil, it's the range he keeps. Yeah. And that's that's the important thing. He cannot let Salem get that lead leg, pick it up and take him down again. And he's doing he's executing that beautifully right now in round number two. he's doing so well with his hands is he's keeping them at a relatively low stance. So they're kind of out of the peripheral vision of his opponents. So they're popping up from strange angles. Salem just biding his time when he can try and make some sort of contact and get it back down onto the mat but three minutes have gone in round number two oh, two minutes left Issa Salem starting to look a little bit fatigued he was shaking out the arms there and that again might be down to the squeeze that lactic acid going through the biceps the forearms of Issa Salem in that first round oh, big left hook Nice movement, that lateral movement going one way, then the oh. other, but Salem trying to find the way to push this against the cage. Two big shots, takedown defended. High clinch as well here, Kirik. Phenomenal job by Issa Salem to simultaneously control the inside oh, and strike. Oh, that's a huge shot. Big knee right in front of a shoulder bar. <laughs> Look at these little shoulder it's just shots. The, the frequency and diversity oh. of the shots being landed here, and then a big, heavy sprawl. Heavy sprawl, and he needs it as well. One minute, 10 left. You can disengage and circle off again and, and get the fight back into the open forum of the center of the cage. Could very much be his for the taking. And <laughs> bounces on his feet as if to say, keep it coming. Standing Whoa. side on again, maybe looking for another one of those oblique kicks. Salem will just be asking questions and questions of himself right now. How do I make contact? How do I avoid damage? I How did I, I not, not finish, finish him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, big hooks coming in. I think we'll have to have a, an MRI scan on uh, my Sarah to see if his carotid artery is actually in his neck. <laughs> What Issa Salem wants to do is throw a one or a one-two, inviting in the exact same thing from his opponent, level change, and get on the hips. He is not winning this fight right now. How loose does my Sara Mohammed look right now? Powerful, accurate, and also it's just the vocabulary of strikes he's laying out there. There's no one combination is the same. Loose fight, accurate, powerful, and happy. That is a happy fighter we're looking at. Now he's got some swag going back to his corner. Completely different round there, Phil. Yeah, completely. The 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 night and day, the, the, the darkness and the light between the two rounds was absolutely crazy. If Mysara keeps the fight at the distance, at the range that he's comfortable with, he will land his strikes. And it feels like it's only a matter of time if he does that before he lands a fight ending strike. You have to give Issa Salem credit for absorbing quite a few of those strikes, which would have put lesser men on their back. Oh, without a doubt. And just talk us through some of this, Kirik, some excellent clinch work. Looking at the, the fight overall thus far, I believe each fighter may well be up, where, uh, up one round. No question whatsoever, Mysara Muhammad won that last round. The first round was a little bit closer, but I do believe they're up one round each, 19 to 19. That means whoever wins this round wins this fight. Takes national pride back home. Iraq versus Egypt, five minutes to decide which flag will fly high inside the Brave Cage here at Brave 48 at Arad Fort. Look at the uh, the scenery, the setting for this epic battle, and it has been exactly that. Back and forth they go. Nice little glove touch, showing the sportsmanship that's characteristic of Brave Combat Federation. Are being the one to put the pressure on his opponent about range once again can 
Issa Salem find a way inside those viper-like strikes from Maisara Mohammed. Look can Mohammed dictate as he did in round number two. When Issa Salem throws punches, he commits to him so hard he's not able to immediately engage in grappling, and it's leaving him in a disadvantage. Think he needs to back off in the power a little bit, loosen up on those shots, and level change and try and get in on the hips, get this fight down to the ground where he's happiest. And number one in particular, that's final 90 seconds. And work in the body, and it really is an investment, the work he's done on the body and the legs for this third round, gentlemen. He sets it up as well. He, look at that. He oh. fakes with the jab, then comes over the top. There's always something opening the shot that he wants to land. Ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, it's not always possible to tell through a television screen how hard a blow lands. We are right next to these shots, and they are landing hard. Work in the body. Absolutely just teeping to that midsection. He looks loose, and as you said, Kirik, happy. And using that lateral movement. The clock is against Salem now. Between that first round and that second round, it's if Mysar has realized what he needs to do and that's maintained, keep the fight at distance, land his strikes, get, get his strikes off without being hit, get out of that danger zone of being taken down. And there again, another stamping kick to the leg. I would not want to be trying to walk if I was Issa Salem tomorrow. That's not going to be fun getting out of bed, lads. <laughs> I just hope the elevator works in this hotel. Oh, now Salem connecting. Oh, but again, the clinch work. Huge knees in the clinch. Would like to see a little short elbow if possible. Salem trying to use the cage now to his advantage, but everything he's met with. Loving those little pop elbow punches. Good work again from Mysara. Instinctive. Oh, oh jumping me. <laughs> It's almost as if he's had a bet with his mates who says, I bet you can't land every possible strike in mixed martial arts. <laughs> Striking bingo going on back in Egypt. Oh, well, many a man has a full house right now. <laughs> oh, looking for the trip. Almost gets it. But again, my Sarah and how... I'd be, I'd be standing off right now if I was my Sarah. Stand yeah. off, back off, invite. You don't want your, your opponent diving in for a leg, diving in for a heel hook. We are talking about a national jiu-jitsu champion as well. Bill, I think my Sara just likes to strike too much to oh, wait. We've got the, the be beginnings of a heel hook. He's setting this up, the oh, knee. Potential for the straight foot lock. But yeah, now straight foot lock underneath the Achilles there. Great ankle lock. He's trying to readjust that, trying to get the purchase, pull it back inside. The, oh, knee's out. Out. the knee is out. And how frustrating must that be mentally, Kirik? Blood as well coming from the right. A eyebrow. little bit of claret there, yep. I think huge frustration is what we're seeing here. The choke didn't work. The takedown didn't work. The submission attempt didn't work. The big question now in his mind, in all of our minds, is what's next? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Just shy with the spin and his oh. kick. And Answered! <laughs> yeah, a little smile there. A little <laughs> Wave to the crowd. Oh, he's having fun in there, isn't he? Well, always nice to see someone enjoying their job, <laughs> gentlemen. Issa Salem showing he is still 100% in this fight. Tired, though, and again, another turning, spinning attack there from Mysara. Loose. Been at loosey goosey. Stepping in, chopping the leg again. Footwork's reminding me of Bruce Lee versus Chuck Norris in the octagon. Or me versus Phil on the dance floor. There is only one winner, Brian <laughs> Lacey. There can only be one. In both of your defense, it was St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> 30 seconds left, gentlemen. Ooh, overhand left coming in. Clock ticking away as my Sarah done enough surviving that first round. And then... Stunning, striking, controlling of the range in rounds two and round three.
That's what I mean. His, his distance management has been beautiful in the second and third round. He's just evaded marginally oh. the strikes being thrown by Issa Salem. Anderson Silva-esque as well, backing up against the cage, calling in Salem. Oh, oh nice big shot to finish. Beautiful Send, fight. Sending the mouthpiece out of Salem's mouth with the final shot. The final insult there, Phil. Yeah, insult to injury is exactly what that was. My shield goes flinging. You hear a Ric Flair-esque woo as he walks <laughs> away. I think uh, Mysara definitely thinks he's done enough to get this fight in the bag, gentlemen. Listen, I've been so impressed with this young man, Mysara. And again, I'll say it, the, the way he survived and won the title yeah, especially back. after the, and sorry, especially after that first round. Yes, without a doubt. And it's hard to describe to people just how deep that is. And, and then you, you can't fight a choke. It's not like a, you can shake off a punch. Yeah. If it's in, it's in. But somehow he found a way to survive. Gentlemen, I thought that fight was over at the end of the first round. I have to send my apologies out to my Sara Muhammad. Kid, I didn't believe in you. I do now, and I will for the rest of your career. Hey, go a ringing endorsement from Kirik Jenes. <laughs> get that on your walkout t-shirt. I was going to say on your Instagram, your Facebook, your Tinder, whatever's going down. So we are set and wait. So we are sitting, waiting for judges' scorecards to be counted. What talent we've seen so far. Bout number three here, Egypt versus Iraq. We are shining a spotlight on Arabian MMA and these lads have done it absolutely proud. Only question in my mind right now is it, is it 30-27 or is it 29-28? Wait, one way we we're gonna see. find out. And that's because the Roaring Lion has walked into the cage to give us the official announcement. All right, Brave Nation, another incredible battle inside the Brave CF48 Arabian Night Cage. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges score the bout. 29-28 for your winner. By unanimous decision, out of the blue corner, Mazzara Mohammed! There we have it, 29-28. Staying undefeated, Mysara Mohammed, making a brave debut to be remembered, Phil. Oh, it's like a shadow of a doubt. Yes, it was a decision. I'm sure he would have wanted a, a finish, but, but with a performance like that, with the striking repertoire that was on show there, Brian, it's definitely a young man to watch in the future. Here we see some of the action. Salem so just trying to get some sort of connection. But Kirik. We have seen Egyptian MMA grow in just one fight there. That is a young star. That is absolutely a young star in the making. And as the fight was progressing, I realized one of the ways he pulled ahead of his opponent was by being put in a submission. By being put in a submission and fighting his way out, he actually pulled ahead psychologically and possibly even physiologically. Absolutely incredible performance by Mysara Muhammad, a budding superstar from Egypt. We'll give credit as well to Issa Salem. It takes two to tango, and he was on a two-fight win streak. I am sure he will be back. He showed heart tenacity. Also, he must just be questioning how did uh, Mysara survive that rear naked choke? Stunning stuff indeed. And Here's this that single leg attempt that was unsuccessful. And again, when you put everything, everything physically, everything psychologically, into get trying to get your opponent to the ground and you're unsuccessful, it's a hard moment. And we've already seen a number of the fighters here on this card talk about the opportunity. There's the final strike with the, uh, the mouthpiece coming out. The opportunity that this platform is giving to shine a light on their nations, their growth in mixed martial arts. All right, Brave Nation, let's continue this historic night Brave CF48 Arabian Night. And welcome our next warriors into the cage. Here we go, Brave Nation. This bout is three five minute rounds in a catch weight of 68 kilograms. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 12 wins and eight losses. He stands 158 centimeters tall and weighs already 67 kilograms. Representing Nordeste Jiu-Jitsu and MMA and fighting out of the magnificent Kingdom of Bahrain by way of Bahia, Brazil. Please welcome Gerson Biaboy Pereira. 
and his opponent. Fighting out of the red corner, this band's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of six wins and three losses. He stands 176 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 67.6 kilograms. Fighting out of Baghdad, Iraq, please give it up for Hussein Salem. Your referee is the Ben Dickey Lord. Big thanks to Arwa, our deeply appreciated beverage sponsor, Arwa. Saint Salem, you'll see the tail of the tape there, 27 years of age, a huge height and reach advantage over the Brazilian via Bahrain. Gerson Pereira, Pereira in the blue corner, Salem in the red, we are underway. That height and reach is so evident. And Phil, it's gonna be about where this fight takes place for me, that's gonna be the interesting thing. Both have got an excellent grappling pedigree, but will Glad Salem work there. look to stay out and keep it on the feet? A big swing and a miss from Pereira. Great awareness there from Salem, ducked under that looping hook. If you're in a position like Pereira here, you've taken the fight on, on 12 hours notice, throw caution to the wind, advance. Dive in for a leg, do, do something, you're a BJJ black belt. <laughs> he is throwing that big overhand right a lot. Be a boy, it's exactly what he wants to do and he was playing possum a little oh, bit the with those on. strikes. This is exactly where he wants to be. If he is a shark, this is the ocean for Gerson Pereira. Not a huge ground and pound guy, he's likely to try and pass to half guard before too long. Interesting to see if Juarez, uh, if Salem throws up the, the legs, looking for the armbar as he got on Juarez in his last fight. He will not tap be a boy. That I can care, not with an armbar from here. Getting a submission on this man, you nearly have to take him out fully before you apply it. And be a boy's heart is monster. He was trying to work with a little bit of wrist control there, but obviously the, the BJJ black belt was wise to it. And he's just solidifying the position, keeping the head the whole way down. Squaring off the hips very well, following Hussein Salem wherever he goes. The only risk here for Gerson Pereira is that referee Deke Larkin may see this as an activity on call because it's not like a jiu-jitsu match where you can take your time, you can work methodically in the gi. Yeah, the close guard there from Salem. What does that tell you about the game he's playing on bottom there, Kirik? That it's excellent. I had expected to have that guard pass by now. It's not even close yet, despite multiple opening of the guard to go for arm bars, both left and right. I'm extremely impressed so far, not just with the striking, but with the jiu-jitsu of Iraq's Hussein Salem. Oh, momentarily there, he opened the guard, shifted the hips ever so slightly, realizes he wasn't gonna get the angle, closed the guard again. Heavy, heavy pressure on top from Gerson Pereira. Burying those braids into the chin there of Hussein Salem. Alem, just keeping him, not giving him the opportunity to, to open that guard, to extend the hips. I'm just looking for, oh. I was thinking about a little bit of a switch there. Yeah, absolutely, saw that open, looking to try and get onto the side of his hips, make something happen. Real chess match in front of us, gentlemen. Gotta say, I don't see it that often, but I'm impressed by the striking game of Iraq Hussein Salem. He's throwing short little elbows, throwing some short shots from bottom, and as well, simultaneously, threatening both with sweeps and with submissions. It's an extremely impressive game so far. Real difference in their anatomy as well, those long, lengthy limbs of the uh, Iraq fighter Salem, whereas you have the short, stocky, powerful ones from uh, Gerson Pereira. I like the mini fridge you keep in your room as opposed to the fridge freezer <laughs> your mom and dad have downstairs. <laughs> Those legs are built for arm bars and triangles. That's clearly what he's trying to set up here. But as we alluded to earlier, one of the huge differences between grappling and jiu-jitsu and MMA is in grappling and jiu-jitsu, you can hold out for a while, wait for your opponent to make a mistake. You need action in mixed martial arts. I'll look up to Deki Larkin there. Maybe trying to get him to intervene. Stacking his opponent up. Final minute now of this first round between these two. 
And the majority has been in the center of the cage in this position. Gerson Pereira on top looking to stack up, try and pass the guard, try and cause some short damaging shots to Salem. But Salem's defensive jiu-jitsu and grappling has been excellent so far. Doing enough though, Gerson Pereira is doing enough just to keep himself honest with these little pot shots to prevent Dickie Larkin from standing them up. And I do think this is exactly where Gerson wants to keep the fight. What will be telling, in my opinion, is what happens when the fight starts on the feet again, leading in at the beginning of the second round. And we'll tell that story as well, as far as the underlying story of Gerson Pereira stepping up on short notice, not having that camp to train, all the cardio potentially needed for that. But there's, there's pluses and minuses to that as well, isn't there, Phil? Because mentally, you've not been going to bed thinking about the fight. Physically, you might not have been trained as hard, so you might not yeah, have the injuries point. coming in. Yeah, you're you, as I said it when he was walking out, he, he has a huge opportunity with very little downside for him, realistically. He's coming in, he's essentially doing the organization a solid, you know, so he holds himself in good stead. Also, Gerson B. Boy Pereira is a teacher at Nordeste Jiu Jitsu, that's his own Jiu Jitsu program. Win, lose, or draw in this fight. He is drawing great attention to Nordeste Jiu Jitsu. Yes, just as I was talking about, just enough little pot shots to keep himself honest. But leading into the second round, if you're Hussein Salem, are you going to try and keep on your bike? Are you going to implement that lateral movement that we love to see from fighters? Land your shots, move, pop, pop, move. Or are you going to try and load up on that big shot? And as we've seen when he did it last time, Garrison being a little bit shorter, just slid underneath, connected the hands, and boom, there was the takedown. We are set for round number two here at Brave 48 at Arad Fort. Again, we look at that wonderful shot as the camera swoops down upon the cage. Round one in mixed martial arts is all about downloading information on your opponent. I think one of the things Hussein Salem has now is what his opponent needs in order to take it down to the ground. I'm not sure it's going to be reproduced. Salem in the red corner, Pereira in the blue, and a little tell of how mentally they're doing in the fight. When Salem went back to his corner, punched the cage in a little bit of frustration. I think it was a position that he thought he was going to find himself in, but that's a beautiful sprawl. Oh, he's oh. coming to the right! Oh, he wobbled he's in! Wobbled in the overhand right Strokes now! Are coming. He had a head kick and knee to the head, but he's firing back! That was a heavy, heavy shot. Be a boy is a bad man to be staying in this fight. Pereira, ne Pereira needs to circle out. It's a huge leg kick. He oh, is still an in trouble. Blood coming from that nose. Wearing the that's a broken nose there. How many more shots can he take? That is a badly broken nose there on Gerson Pereira's face. Wearing it now. Oh! oh and now the takedown came very, very labored, and that broken nose is then going to obstruct his breathing, which obstructs his cardio. Blood will be dipping a smile on the face there. The smile on the face. Oh, oh Deki Larkin almost came out of retirement <laughs> momentarily, ladies and gentlemen. Hussein Salem once in this fight. Hussein Salem is just pouring it on now. Oh, elbows. Oh, just misses with that kick as well. Oh, that could be the end of it. Pereira was sh shelled up momentarily. Big, big damage caused early Saint on. Saint Salem's going to stand it up again. Won't come in quite as quickly this time. A little bit slow was Beer Boy getting to his feet. Wipe away that blood. And you've got to be careful with that nose. If you try and blow it out, that's when it can fill the orbital with air. Beer Boy needs to be careful dipping his head down when he's throwing that overhand. Leaving himself wide open for a lead leg head kick from Hussein Salem. Out. Gerson putting the pressure on coming forward still in this fight. As are all of us, Hussein Salim, got to oh. be impressed with Bia Boy's toughness. Oh, it's oh, a big shot right, right down the middle. Just sweeping the legs to the side, landing big strikes. Oh, and decorating the brave cage as well, my goodness. Pressure, pressure, pressure coming from Hussein Salim. They am still being respectful though of the jiu-jitsu game of Ferreira. I think he's doing the right thing, stand off and Every time Pereira's got to the feet, it's been with a little less urgency. 35 seconds, almost halfway through this round, and Kirik, those seconds will feel like hours to uh, Pereira. Pereira is, as I said before, a bad man. Be a boy is a bad man. He cannot be broken mentally, as you can see. He's still in this fight, trying to win it with his hands. I love the fact that he just takes a deep breath, bites down on his mouthpiece, and tries to come over the top. Oh, big knee! It's another oh, one. Oh, shot to the body. 
This is unreal stuff here. Oh, huge shot to the body in for the takedown. Big sprawl from Hussein. Stunning stuff from Hussein Salem. We saw the frustration at the end of round one as he punched the cage. He took that frustration right out on the nose of Gerson Pereira at the start of round number two. Hussein Salem knows what's winning this fight. He's dominating the standing portion of it. If a takedown comes through one or two low kicks, call your opponent up. He's going to keep doing it. If job from Pereira there. Oh, oh just oh. look at the blood coming out of the nose. He's oh, dropped again. Oh, he wobbled again. him. Decky Larkin on top of this. Still guessing Pereira surviving. He's trying to rule. He's trying to get out of the way, but he's eating huge shots here. Decky Larkin stops the fight. Gerson Pereira end. still wanted it. Hussein Salem from Iraq is victorious. Gerson Pereira contesting the stoppage, but at the end of the day, when you've absorbed that kind of punishment, fighter safety is paramount, solid stoppage. You don't want to see a fighter absorb any more punishment than he has to, Brian. Absolutely, and you talked about Gerson Pereira doing the promotion a solid, Deki Ladik like he did him a solid, because those strikes were coming down again and again. And although there was a little bit of disappointment from Gerson Pereira, you don't need to take that sort of unnecessary damage. The flow of damage was going one way, and that was all being dished out by this man. Just talk us through this finish. Oh, you just see, he swarmed him. He realized there was quite literally blood in the water and just loaded up with huge shots that were getting through a borderline lackadaisical guard, forcing Deggy Larkin to step in. But what I really respected about the game of Hussein Salem was he was respectful of the jiu-jitsu, landed a couple of shots, stood away again. Very, very smart. That stuff, devastating stuff as well. Oof, boom, another one comes down. You just have to look at the amount of blood around that brave cage. Her just lads cleaning up, have their work cut out for them, don't they? <laughs> and Deki Larkin steps in. Further props to Hussein Salem because, sure, his opponent took the fight on short notice, but so did he. He trained for weeks for a single opponent that was changed up to somebody that at the time it happened, he may not even have seen tape. So huge respect to both of these fighters. Let's bring it in, let's make it official. Let's hand it to that roaring lion. Once we've had a photo opportunity. <laughs> Got to do it for the grand, there's, gentlemen. There's always time for a selfie. All right, Brave Nation, another incredible battle inside the Brave CF 48 cage. This comes to an end at three minutes and 35 seconds of the second round. Your winner by TKO due to strikes, Hussein Salem! Wow, the Roaring Lion had some competition there from Hussein Salem. <laughs> you could see exactly what that victory meant to him. Bearing that flag of Iraq proudly upon his shoulders and as he should do, he's flown it high with work like this, Phil. And there you just see some of the work he did early with that beautiful kicking. Seen the takedown and this is where something changed in the mind of Hussein. He realized he didn't want to be in this position. He didn't want it to be another ladder, rinse, repeat round for him. So he implemented a different game plan. He changed things up, did so beautifully, en route to a huge victory. Stunning stuff, action packed second round there from Hussein Salem. That was the one that broke his nose, the right hand connected. You can see he's in trouble. You've got to give props to Gerson Pereira, though. You said this man will not break mentally. He did not do that, Kirik. He did not, but watching these shots in replay in slow motion, I want to say once again, Deki Larkin, among the best in the world, could be the best, definitely the best in the world tonight. Perfect stoppage. Perfect stoppage. The damage was adding up. And look at this. They were connecting these big overhands, and they just kept coming. One more coming over the top here. Oof, just glances across the beard. And that one connects clean. Decky has seen enough, calls it. Has us on our feet in the commentary booth with this sort of action, wow. The issue here, Brian, was be a boy's guard. He was no longer using the guard effectively to keep his, his, his opponent off of him. This bout is sponsored by Brave Energy Drink. Only the best to power your best effort. Fortune favors the brave. Mohamed Garabi is set to make his much-anticipated Brave CF debut as he takes on Aslam Siaha, the number one middleweight in Egypt. Coming up next, Mohamed Dakila Garabi faces Iron Man Aslam Siaha.
Brave Nation, we're making history tonight. And let's continue with another classic middleweight bout. Here we go, Brave Nation. This fight is three five-minute rounds in a middleweight battle. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 10 wins and two losses. He stands 183 centimeters tall and weighs already 84 kilograms. Representing SB Academy and fighting out of Egypt. Put your hands together for the Iron Man, Islam Siaha! And his opponent. Fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of six wins and five losses. He stands 176 centimeters tall and weighs already 84.3 kilograms. Representing Team Gorabi and fighting out of Lebanon. Please welcome Mohammed Dakila Gorabi. Your referee is the bandit, Decky Larkin. Big thanks to Toyota Bahrain, our official automotive partner. There we see the tail of the tape. Eslam Sayaha, the younger of the two with the height and reach advantage. Mohamed Gaharabi in the red corner. Eslam Sayaha in the blue. A, a young fighter like Eslam Sayaha to take the scalp of a veteran, thus further enhancing his own reputation in Arab mixed martial arts. Yeah, the announcements, he invited him into the center of the cage. A dangerous thing to do with Garabi. You talked about that karate ped pedigree. He has such a fantastic and dangerous kicking game. Get the measure of one another. Oh, big hooks into the takedown. Has he got the hands connected? That is a powerful takedown. of Gorabi as he went down to the mat. But this is a strong, strong start, quite literally from Siaha. Pull that wrist out a little bit from the grasp of, that overhook grasp of Gorabi. There he does it, has an opportunity to land a couple of strikes, should he wish to, in that half guard position that we're seeing become more and more popular in mixed martial arts. from light heavyweight. Carrying that power, that pressure, and applying it fully into the body of Garabi. Now has he got Mount Kirik? He is in Mount, this he is does. a bad spot. Oh, where Garabi wants to find himself. Potential for big shots and big elbows here. Oh, there they this are. This is devastating ground and pound. Oh, slipping the elbow right through the guard. Looking for the finish. That's, they're being blocked. They are being blocked. Siaha is showing superior technique and superior strength. It's an almost oh. unbeatable combination. Oh, Garabi gives up the oh, back. Oh, flattened out now. Siaha does have two wins, or sorry, three wins by submission, so may look for a choke here. I think it's short time, that's, and that's oh, it. Oh, that's it over. Deki Larkin gave him every opportunity, but once he turned over, once he was able to get flattened out. Huge. Big, big statement made there from the Iron Man, Siaha. That is an absolutely huge statement to make. I said this would be a huge scalp for him in the context of Arab MMA. I was wrong. It is huge. He's already, already calling, calling for, for the, the belt. Bring confidence. me your champion. Confidence abounds. <laughs> huge <laughs> statement by the number one light heavyweight in Egypt on his way up. And yeah, now making waves within the middleweight ranks as well. And that was just a display of pure power and ferocity there for once he got it to the mat. Oh, oh, he still wants to go. Not content with one win tonight. But just huge. As soon as he took the back, had his opponent flattened out, and he's just landing those clubbing lunch boxes to the dome. One after the other. And you can see Deki Larkin giving every opportunity, but they're unanswered shots. And once again, protecting the fighters at all costs. Brave Nation, the two fighters are embracing immediately above us, sharing respect and even love now. 
And we see the final few seconds of what was an epic debut from that man, the Iron Man, Eslam Siaha. Let's make it official. Let's hand it to the Roaring Lion, Carlos Kramer. All right, Brave Nation, another incredible battle inside the Brave CF 48 Arabian Night Cage. This comes to an end at two minutes and four seconds of the very first round. Your winner by TKO out of Egypt, the Iron Man, Islam Siaha. <laughs> <laughs> His coach was not, training partner was not content with getting taken down. So he did a nice little trip for himself. But that man claims the accolades tonight. The Iron Man, Eslem Siaha, as clean a debut as you can get, Phil. Yeah, again, against a legitimate, tough, gritty veteran of the sport. It's a huge win, and he really has propelled himself right now into the global consciousness of mixed martial arts. What I found was so intriguing was the fact that he was already making gestures towards the belt here. So this is a not what you would call a, a shy and retiring young fighter by any stretch of the imagination. I don't, I don't think he lacks confidence there. No, he's, uh, <laughs> but why wouldn't you when you are built like that, when you can execute a game plan like that? And seriously, when you go up against a world-class striker and you can walk out without a mark on you, that is a, a, a top-level performance, Kirik. I do want to send out my respect to Mohamed Korabi. As I said at the beginning of the fight, ring rust is real. Being out for three years, it usually takes at least a round to work that rust out. Unfortunately for him tonight, that round was not available. Tonight belongs to Islam Siaha. Islam Siaha, an absolute monster of a man. Size does matter in the cage, right, Kirik? It does. <laughs> Size matters everywhere in this life. It matters in the jungle. The lion's not the king of the jungle, it's the elephant. Lions get eaten by other lions. Nobody eats elephants. Size matters. It this bout is presented by Brave Nutrition. Behind the athlete, there are hours of training. Behind every hard training is Brave Nutrition. Hassan Fahredi is looking to follow in the footsteps of his champion brother as he returns to action against Eslam Abdelmanem, one of the best strikers in North Africa and undefeated in his MMA career. Coming up next, the Lebanese assassin, Hassan Fahredi, returns against Eslam Abdelmanem. All right, Brave Nation, this next battle is three five-minute rounds in a catch weight of 88 kilograms. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of two wins and no losses. He stands 100. 85 centimeters tall and weighs already 87.3 kilograms. Representing VIP gym and fighting out of Egypt, please welcome Islam Mustafa Abdel Cellini Manem. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of two wins and no losses. He stands 182 centimeters tall and weighs already 87.1 kilograms. Representing 10th Planet San Diego, USA, and fighting out of Lebanon, please welcome Hassan Fakhradi. Your referee is the bandit, Decky Larkin. Big thanks to B1, our hygiene sponsor, B1. We have the tail of the tape there, but it means nothing because my goodness, the intensity between these two during the announcements of their names, they stare at each other's down, they go straight to work. Menem in the blue corner, Fakhradin in the red. We are underway, gentlemen. Hey, what, during that call out, you could not deny that boy as a Fakhradin, could you? <laughs> Just on his toes, smiling across the cage. Doing well to evade the shots there. Lands and put knees of himself in the clinch now. Very loose and relaxed coming from that boxing background. Oh, look at that roll. It's movement, stunning stuff there. The evasive work of Fakhradin. 
He moves so well. I believe his, his last fight for Brave, this was way back at Brave 7 when he beat Rodrigo Reyes, was actually at, at one, uh, was it 170 yeah, lightweight. Yeah, yeah. Now fighting, this is a catch weight at 88 kilograms. Now he has the clinch, lands a beautiful high knee, working diligently against the cage, working the body, working the head. Here Worked he, the hip a little bit. <laughs> the hip as well, burying that hair he is hoping Woo! to keep Kirik. <laughs> Beautiful elbow, maybe trying to pass off that free arm to his overhooking arm. Ours to call this a smorgasbord of striking so far, gentlemen. Wow, there we go. Well, I am ready to eat, my goodness. The head buried there on the side. Nice knee up the middle again from Fakhreddin. Looks the stronger of the two against the cage. Asan Fakhreddin working short, sharp shots very, very effectively on the inside. It's constant work from him though. He's not using the clinch position to settle and, and kind of get his breath back. He's trying to land shots. He's landing knees to the thigh. This isn't engine. wall and stall. This is wall and shotgun. <laughs> you can hear the corner there though of Menem. They want better head position. Uh, why is that, Phil? What, what, what is, because that is one of the battles going on here, At right? the minute, Hassan Fakhreddin has perfect head placement. He has his head underneath the chin of his opponent and invariably where the head goes, the body will follow. The man with his head underneath uh, his opponent's head, uh, he, he kind of controls where the fight goes in a situation like this. Dagestani handcuff. Attempt there, that's reaching for that free arm from behind the opponent's back and getting hold of the wrist. In grappling, it doesn't work because the wrists are sweaty, but you are allowed legally under the rule, unified rules of mixed martial arts to hold onto the glove. You can't stick your fingers in, but you can reach around it. It provides excellent purchase on that wrist and create, can create a huge scoring opportunity. Opportunity for a big knee up the middle with, if Hassan continues that wrist control, creates a little bit of space. There's a big opportunity for a knee right up the middle. Right, they separate a smile from Menem there, but deep breath as well. Fakhreddin looking to back him up. Oh, oh but nice. he's a big shot there from the overhand. Oof. Very grueling start, very grueling. First three minutes here at Brave 48 for these two. Pawing, pawing, pawing with that jab as Fakhreddin to come back with his own right hand. That, though, that momentum to bring him back into that clinch position against the cage, has that underhook on the far side. Everything in this sport has to be set up. Every submission, every takedown, every strike. Madara initially tried as a setup to create complete chaos, but through controlling the inside, Hassan Fakhreddin is taking over this fight. M needs to be wary of when he's evading the strikes, he's just leaning the head back, leaving the chin exposed. It's not traditional head movement, slipping and rolling under, it's moving backwards. We've seen that happen to fighters where they move backwards on the back foot and they end up getting clipped. Oh, he's getting wild now as well, Phil. He's got to be careful. This is not efficient fighting, is it, from Menem? Well, it looks good. Don't like Aesthetically, it looks like he's trying to gather punches, but at the end of the day, it's wasted energy. He's not doing oh, anything with it. Oh, he's been dropped with a oh, body shot. He's dropped oh, a huge oh, and it's over. Oh. Hassan Fakhreddin is your winner. Once more, a Fakhreddin claims an emphatic victory inside the Brave Arena. And Brian, surely this is a fighter that, that, that could do pretty much whatever he wants in the Brave Arena. We saw the smile as he stepped into the cage. We saw the stare down, the bounce on his feet. He thrived in this environment and he stepped up to the pressure. We asked that question before, will that mean anything? No, he absolutely shined tonight. For me, his hands, his boxing, his movement, and then the power oh. in this body shot. What a performance. Just lands that body shot expertly, leaves Menem looking like a question mark, and it was just clean, beautiful boxing. There's something when you take the head, the knockout power, but something else, Kirik, when you dig that body and force the surrender from your opponent. It is indeed. Some things in life cannot be described by words. You just have to see them. You have to experience them. The birth of a first child can't put it into words. And being blasted in the liver like that cannot be put into words. It feels like the end of the world. Said to me, the bet going into this was whoever lost would have to shave their head. I have to say, I, with the, the head of hair, it felt like a slightly unfair bet because Fakhreddin had far more, quite literally, to lose. But he will not have to worry about that mane of his being Madara, in trouble. Madara is the one who made the bet right there in front of me. Fakhreddin did accept it. Man of his word, I know he would have, but he doesn't have to.
Bring them together. Night for Lebanon. Yeah, fantastic night. We'll bring them together. We'll get that Fakhreddin arm raised in the cage. We need one man to do that. That man is Carlos Kramer. All right, Brave Nation, another incredible finish. This comes at 3 minutes and 49 seconds of the first round. Your winner by TKO due to strikes from 10th Planet, San Diego, California, USA. Give it up for Hassan Fakhreddin. A name we know well in the Brave Arena, but now a new face to it as well, Hassan Fakhreddin. Claiming victory, raising his hand, the Lebanese flag. Stunning stuff. Coming out of 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu, they must have some one hell of a boxing course there. Yeah, this, the striking <laughs> coming from the Jiu-Jitsu. Well, you've got a guy like Manuel Hernandez as the head of coach. Course. You're talking about of royalty course. in the mixed martial arts coaching game. But yes, as you say, a similar name and not dissimilar face. Because watching him there, even just with the hair down, the face, the beard, so Fakhreddin, it was undescribable. Lands that big shot, shows that family fighting spirit, gets a second win here in Brave Combat Federation. Undisputable, un indistinguishable as well, that style, that look, and my goodness, that body shot, Kirik. Absolute money. Once again, from the outside, those in mixed martial arts, often a shot can land, and on television, it doesn't look devastating. Liver shots are very often like that. Up until the moment it lands, it looks like a, a, a light shot, a wide wing shot that happens to land. But internally, as I said, it feels like the very end of the planet. This bout is brought to you by Brave Gym. Training for mind, body, and spirit. Brave, it's more than a gym. Omar al Defraoui makes his Brave CF debut looking for his fifth straight win as he faces off against Abbas Khan, who wants to repeat in the pros the same level of success he's had as an amateur. Coming up next, Omar God First El Defraoui takes on Abbas Khan in a super lightweight bout. Here we go, Brave Nation. This bout is three five-minute rounds in the super lightweight division. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of no wins and one loss. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs already 75.2 kilograms. Representing KHK MMA and fighting out of the magnificent Kingdom of Bahrain by way of Pakistan. Please welcome Abbas Khan. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of five wins and one loss. He stands 183 centimeters tall and weighs already 75.1 kilograms. Representing Cicero Costa and fighting out of Egypt. Please welcome Omar El Dafraoui. Your referee is a bandit, Decky Larkin. Thanks to Nordic Palace and Spa, our hospitality partner. And you will see there the tail of the tape, Omar Eldafrawi, a significant height advantage. And I've got to say, gentlemen, when you look at them side by side, they look a weight class or two different. Abbas Khan starting early, chasing a little bit, trying to make his mark early. Oh, nice front kick there. Omar in the red. And movement is key here for Abbas Khan, isn't it? Oh, doesn't, you can't let you get yourself caught in the clinch with somebody that is so powerfully set. Oh, beautiful double underhook trip. And against their no gi and gi national jiu-jitsu champion who just switched the knee on belly oh, out, possibly in the mount. Nice job by Abbas Khan to get the butterflies. Beautiful work there. What are they learning in these opening seconds, Kirik? I'm learning that these are two fantastic fighters, although oh, I knew it already. The clutch. tide's now turned. KHK fighter is on top. From the bottom to the top. Phenomenal turnaround there. Already you can see Omar working for that grip, that wrist control, Phil. Yeah, perhaps trying to set up a triangle. Abbas Khan needs to be very wary of that. You can see the hips are starting to move. Guard was momentarily open of Dafrawi. 
Abbas Khan doing a good job now just to again solidify the position. Work from there. Doing a good job of compressing his opponent against the cage, thus immobilizing the body and hips. The cage represents a unique factor in the grappling aspect of mixed martial arts. It will help you get up back to standing, but it will hurt you when you try and go for a submission. As you saw, got first up to standing now. Abbas Khan as well as he came up to his feet, Omar. An elder in the corner there of Abbas Khan, the, uh, the super lightweight champion. Abbas Khan trying to dig in, changing levels, trying to connect the hands. Great job by Dafrawi to bring the level of Abbas Khan back up, thus negating that double leg takedown. Very impressed from Abbas Khan, the control he's got. We've, we talked about Omar looking a weight class above. Looks so strong, physically the best condition I've seen him in. But Khan using technique to control him and hold against the cage. Oh, and that turn, that is oh, beautiful. From the Whoa. single yeah, to the man. double. That That's gorgeous. That was beautiful. <laughs> the single, the turn, the double. Switches to the double mid-pivot. That's absolutely gorgeous. I feel like we should be holding scorecards up with 10. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a good job now of just immobilizing the leg. Oh, composed Abbas Khan. So, so... Uh, uh, eating some heavy hammer fest from the bottom. Yeah, some coming up. Knee shield there as well from Omar. Needs to make space, try and get back to his feet, but can't. I'll be surprised if he lets him back up. Trying to find a way in past those long, dangerous limbs of the Egyptian Omar, the Farawi. Oh! Hey! <laughs> Sanchez style cartwheel kick. Decky Larkin calling a stop time under the rules of mixed martial arts you cannot stomp down and you can't kick down to the head you are allowed to kick to the legs you are allowed to kick to the body however both players do bear some responsibility we're going to see right now beautiful up kick and there was an immediate low kick i'm not sure it landed clean i'm going to have to see it one more time for my money it didn't i'm going to say off the bat it didn't look like the cleanest of strikes that would see this angle it may have just Sk glanced but if you have enough time to look at the referee and and, and dispensation you, you you can't try and claim anything else other than that back to the feet they go off we go again abbas can't Showing some lovely little movement there. Yeah, it, it, oh, oh he got caught a little bit there. Straight in on the double. Good sprawl from El Dafrawi. Let's see if we see more of that exquisite wrestling on show from Abbas Khan. Look how he turns him around. That That's is just technique beautiful. 101. The angle of his uh, underhook. And oh, now big high him crotch. Up. Potential for a big high crotch. May switch to the double. Head position as well, Kirit Khan is showing evolution after just his second pro fight look at who his coach is it explains a lot Eldar Eldaroff one of the best opening round very interesting Phil so far oh a nice end to the round would be Khan ending up on top hey we've seen uh, we've seen a much more calm a much more assured looking Abbas Khan than we did and is uh, debuting as a professional. Breaks the grip nicely with the knee. Close. Exactly. Maybe it was the uh, the difference in time with the break. I think the clock was stopped. There we go. There's the final 10 second clacker. Take down from Abbas Khan. That'll serve him well. There we have it. Round one in the books. And fellas, that was a nice chess match between the two. Omar with the first of the takedowns. Reversed then by Abbas Khan. Then we had <laughs> the cage grappling where Khan got the control. Bit of controversy with the kick on the bottom, but there was this beautiful takedown. This, well, this was the first one from Omar.
Gentlemen, mixed martial arts in the Middle East rests on the shoulders of Sheikh Khalid. Everyone was so fired up for this incredible event, Arabian Night, that we talked to the judges and we said, we're not going to need you, leave you, need you tonight. Everybody is going to finish their fights. But I got to tell you, the judges are going to have to work hard to try and figure out who won that round. And let's talk one more time. Just in the replay, we oh. saw that single mid pivot turn in the pipe, change into <laughs> a double leg. Bang down in the middle of the cage. Stunning stuff from Abbas Khan there. Round two set to get underway. Omar the Frawi slightly slow to get off his stool. Dripping with water as well there. Time. Deku Larkin spotting that. Asking for the towel. And again, this is a when you're looking at it, it's what has been such a grappling heavy first round. It's important that they are on equal, quite literally grippings or, or standings, yeah. because that that water could stop some of the grappling of Abbas Khan. Eldar Eldarov in the corner of Abbas Khan said, "Finish him now! Finish him this round!" Oh, a nice side kick to the midsection there of Khan, and that's very much how he opened the first round as well. So now in the clinch, a big knee as well. Here at the high crotch, let's see what Abbas Khan can do from this position again. Turns him, pressures him up against the cage. He's trying to dig in for the underhook is El Dafrawi. Oh, difficult trying to get the taller man down, oh. but there we have it. They really made him work for that takedown, yeah. Brian. Now in the guard here. What do you want to see from Abbas Khan in this position, Kirik? I want to see damage. I want to see him start to damage his opponents. Surest way to accomplish that is to grab a wrist, lean the body sideways, and come in directly over the top with an elbow. Little shots like that are not what he needs right now. Do you think during that first round and in the break, Phil, there was some so dents in the mental armor of Omar Dafaro. You, you talk about the, the, the kick that glanced across. He looked very frustrated about that. Slow to come off his stool and now down in another position which he's it's going to be grinding on him mentally as well as physically. Yeah, this is not a position he wants himself to be in and he has to be proactive in a situation like this. He has to make something happen. Get the feet on the hips, open the guard, try and shift your own hips, make something happen. You can't just be lying flat backing and absorbing punishment from Abbas Khan. Omar El Defrawi wants to submit from here, but he can't. When you're that tight up against the fence, really there's no submissions available. What he needs to do is change gears, put a foot in the hip, go. Elbow, knee, hand, foot, and get himself up. Little threat there of a triangle from the Frawi, but as soon as it was, Khan dropped some heavy, heavy shots. Saying that though, we talked about Omar's last fight where he won the title three rounds, and he was losing at a fantastic back and forth battle, but he was certainly losing it and under pressure in the third round, but somehow found a way to make space for that jiu-jitsu to engage and claim that title. Well, right now he's trying to make something happen. He has a foot on the hip, he has one grapevine in. Has the overhook there as well. But I'm glad Dickie Larkin is giving him time to try and work something, but he is calling for a little more action. If he doesn't see it, there will be a stand up. Needs to be careful of getting that wrist stuffed down. How clear frustration on the face yeah, there of Dafra. He looks at the referee, but the referee's not there to help you. Absolutely. This is your position to get out of or to make the most of. He's doing a little bit better now, trying to shift their hips. But Abbas Khan just squares himself up slowly. Oh, and tries to make space, pushing back down his Khan. Two minutes left in round number two here, a brave 48. Omar El Dafrawi actually showing good shots from bottom when he's able to, but Abbas Khan is so skilled at pushing his opponent up against the fence, there are very few opportunities to. Deki Larkin stands it up, and I think that was the right call. Back to their feet, one minute, 40 seconds to make something happen. A frustrated looking Omar Dafrawi. 100 seconds to glory. Uh, Khan still looks fresh, it must be oh, said. Oh, he caught him! Oh, he him he with caught it. him with the spinning elbow oh, to the right hand. These are huge shots. Rock'em, sock'em! 
And again, now Defrawi trying to get it back to the mat, but ends up on his back. Stunning stuff from Abbas Khan. Beautiful shots being landed there. Coming from the spinning back fist, spinning elbow. I think it was more the forearm actually caught, but beautiful work. And then just swarms Al Defrawi. Wow. <laughs> that certainly raised the adrenaline outside the cage. And now Khan once again in this top position. One minute to play with. But Defrawi. Credit to him for uh, taking that shot so well. Looking for the takedown himself. That did lead to this position, but his survival instincts were certainly kicking in. I think slight finger to the eye there, potentially, because the hand, the open hand was against the face of Defrawi. I'm not sure how much. This is going to be interesting. There's just something about his demeanor, and it has mm, been since, since that, that yeah. kick that potentially wasn't the way he interpreted it. No. Fight to safety, obviously paramount. The doctor will check them. Top flight medical care. We have three doctors on staff. It should, God forbid, somebody get hurt and has to leave. They're still the doctor would go with them. There'll still be two more doctors here. Okay, I stand corrected. There was an eye poke there. Wow. My my apologies to El Dafrawi. There was an eye poke there. Back to work they go. Final seconds. Oh, nice second right. Yes. Some nice strikes coming in there from El Dafrawi, but again, just closing the distance. Just needs to co connect the hands. Has the hands connected? Big Ooh. double. Oh! And just the angle at which he potentially landed on the knee there. Yeah, absolutely. Trying to get in on a guillotine. I can't see. How can't deep that is. That looks like it's under the chin. Can't stand the right thing, though. He's tripoding. It's arm in, guillotine as well. Final 10 seconds. Yeah, making space. Now that head is going to come out. I don't know about that. That guillotine is fairly tight right now. There Round we go. ends. Woof. And the Ferrari, just a little sh warning shot across the bow of Abbas Khan. And Abbas Khan in a pretty much control for that second round, the spinning back fist, the elbow, the connected, the control from that top position, but the threat of the jiu-jitsu always there from Omar. Talk us through this, Phil. Without a shot of a doubt, but the most telling blow that Defrawi has landed has been that leaping sidekick. Why he's not going to that a little bit more to work on the body uh, is a question you would need to ask him, but wow, there's oh, that spinning. That elbow, that is bone that to, uh, to orbital, and he's taken it well. Some beautiful follow-up shots there. Winging gets caught himself. Rock'em, sock'em, as you said, Kirik. Omar El Dafrawi has some awesome strikes from the outside. This round, he needs to get on that bicycle. He needs to do employ his very best distance management and do what he does best, which is throw long shots from the outside. It is to his disadvantage hugely to be in close proximity to Abbas Khan. Deggy Larkin actually giving the, the corner of Dafrawi a little bit of a telling off there, well, telling them not to pour water over his head. Took it out of Dafrawi's hands. I say took, ripped. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to see Abbas Khan putting the pressure on nice and early here. He may sense that El Dafrawi may be starting to win a little bit. Final round here at Brave 48. The, the mouth of Dafrawi is wide open. It's a little Absolutely. bit slaggy. He's gulping in those breaths. So, and you've got to be careful with that. You get caught with a clean shot like a spinning elbow, and that jaw is open. That mandible, that bone, yeah, can easily get down. Oh, big shots coming in from Omar. He is landing shots of his own. But Gentlemen. every time he does that, you just see Abbas Khan close the distance, secure the body lock, and get the takedown. Once again, this top position from Abbas Khan, and even under pressure, that instinctive grappling, the grappling that KHK is becoming renowned for, feared for, on display here at Brave 48. There's a little bit of a debate in mixed martial arts about whether it's more important to be fast or more important to be powerful. I think, particularly in the third round, it's endurance that trumps all. Whoever has the better endurance, whoever put the extra rounds in every day, every single day in camp is going to is going to dominate here. They're saying the fatigue makes cowards of us all, and I never call any man who steps into this arena a coward, but Let's the sentiment is there. Oh, yeah, looking for that triangle. Can he get it over? Momentarily look to try and play a little bit of rubber guard. Khan wise to it. He has to make something yeah. happen from bottom. He has to either make space and get back to the feet or start threatening with submissions. But this 
game that Khan plays, he is so tightly on you. There is no space. Still, the clock ticks down. Still, Abbas Khan pushes forward. The questions are being asked from him. Deki Larkin may stand this up, but maybe just enough action going from Abbas Khan to keep it in this position. Abbas Khan has nasty elbows. I'd like to see him right about now. And you can hear the corner of Abbas Khan there saying all he is looking for is that triangle. Guards potentially open here of Abbas, oh sorry, for Abbas Khan to, to switch into the half, but needs to be wary of that wrist control grip that El Dafrawi has right now. Now he's looking for that triangle, trying to force that wrist down, but two minutes, 20 seconds to try and make that happen. Omar El Dafrawi has a nasty guard. I think it's compromised significantly by being up against that cage. I could see this being very different if they were in the middle of the Brave Combat Federation cage, but they're not. Oh, it's a beautiful oh, pass where they're just shelving over. the legs. Boom, wraps them up. Just when Omar thought the night couldn't get any more miserable, but gets those legs back. Look at the pressure though, the head pressure, the constant forward motion from Abbas Khan. And now he just takes it away, the, the pillars that El Dafrawi was trying to free him off. Just a really solid, smart, methodical performance. Methodical indeed, and you can see just what sort of a character Abbas Khan has and how he is held in high regard by the KHK team. They all stood just on the outside of the arena trying to get a glimpse of their teammate. Needs to be wary of that triangle as we've seen the dying embers of the third round as Real Defrawi likes to grab that triangle. Big respect to Omar El Dafrawi. He is not backing off at all. He's got a game and he's trying his hardest to play it. He's looking for a limb, looking to get his limbs oh. around his opponent's neck. Tried a little victory roll, see if he could come out of a scramble, perhaps with a triangle. Not happening yet. And now Khan in side control. Very, very nice cage fighting right there from Abbas Khan. His opponent escaped, got his back towards center where more, more setups for his submissions were available. Abbas Khan wasn't having it, spun him around, jammed him up against the cage again, and is about to rain down pain. Yeah, really using that cage as a weapon. And now regarding is Omar. But he's had no answer for the pressure, has he, Phil? No, everything that he's tried to do, Abbas Khan has had an answer for. Whether that be trying to open the hips, they've been squared off. When it comes to the striking, he has landed some good shots, but Abbas Khan has been able to eat those in reply with his own. Final seconds of this fight. Oh, a little bit of bad blood there. Abbas Khan making a point. No love in their gloves right now. Third round coming up. Omar El Dafrawi needs to get on his bicycle and maintain distance. However, all done. That is it. Abbas Khan still looking. Oh, and still looking across the cage. Not happy with his opponent. I think that might be because of the yeah, I think the, so too. the kick that may not the kick that may not have caused the amount of damage yeah. that, that perhaps El Dafrawi was anticipating. The eye poke, and then there was a shout of "He's holding my shorts." Ah to the referee in the third round. Talking to the camera is Abbas Khan, clear and confident that he has taken that victory. And the demeanor there says it all of Omar Dafarawi, but we should give credit to him three hard rounds against the tough, tough talent that is KHK's own Abbas Khan. Both the Pakistan flag and the flag of Bahrain. And this is nice to see. Congratulations from Abbas Khan to Omar El Dafrawi. Congratulations, were accepted. <laughs> and that moment, Kirik, to get it back after the, the debut that he was so upset about where he lost by via flying knee, to now put in three hard rounds, three hard rounds of experience against a very wily jiu-jitsu ground player, a very physically strong opponent like that, that is gonna stand him in good stead going forward.
That is 100% the fact. Sometimes winning is not good. Fighters don't learn anything from it, but a hard fought bout like that, nothing but a learning experience. And of course, I believe it's gonna be a victory as well. Let's throw it up to the man himself, Mr. Carlos Kramer. All right, Brave Nation, another amazing battle inside the Brave CF48 Arabian Night Cage. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges score the bout 30 27 for your winner by unanimous decision from Cage KMMA by way of Pakistan, Abbas Khan. And there we have it, the hand of Abbas Khan claiming the victory, claiming his first victory under the Brave banner. And I say it again, you can tell just what sort of a personality he is within that gym, the amount of his teammates that are trying to sneak their head round the side to cheer him on, to physically be there with him through that. That says a lot, doesn't it, Phil? Well, it says a lot about not just Abbas Khan, but the ethos they have at KHK. They are a family. They're, they're essentially an army of... To, to steal a phrase from a countryman of mine. If one of them goes to war, they all go to war, Brian. <laughs> and here is some of the action. Phenomenal grappling, and he reversed his position here, Kirik. That was the start of what was the story of the fight. Khan's grappling just was superior at the top position. It was indeed, Brian. I actually really liked Omar El Dafraoui's striking. I enjoyed it, I respect it. I thought it was, look at that! You see that in MMA once a year perhaps. I'd love to see him back in the Brave Combat Federation cage. It just can't be against somebody with dominant wrestling like that of Abbas Khan. And that's what you learn as well as even in those losses that you touched on, they teach you so much. And he will have gained a lot of experience from this against Abbas Khan, but Abbas Khan wiping away the memory of that last fight with moments like this. Looked phenomenal in every aspect, the striking, the grappling, the war. <laughs> the rock'em, sock'em <laughs> robots. What a pair of warriors. And there we go, pulls the legs away. Oh, stunning stuff. It, on the feet, exchanging shots. And look at this, the exchange to the grappling. This bout is sponsored by Brave Energy Drink. Only the best to power your best effort. Fortune favors the brave. Yusuf Gareri is looking forward to showcasing his top-notch striking as he makes his Brave CF debut against Hassan Talal, who is eager to continue his path towards the top on the biggest stage for Arab MMA. Coming up next, Yusuf Gareri takes on Hassan Fearless Talal in a featherweight bout. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our next Warriors into the Brave CF48 cage. All right, Brave Nation, this next battle is three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Brave Nation, introducing your first Warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of three wins and one loss. He stands 100. 72 centimeters tall and weighs already 66.2 kilograms. Representing fearless Team Jordan and fighting out of Iraq, please welcome Hassan Talo. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of seven wins and two losses. He stands 100. 77 centimeters tall and weighs already 65.7 kilograms. Representing TriStar Gym and fighting out of Lebanon, please welcome Yusuf the Widowmaker, Gravy! Your referee is a bandit, Decky Larkin. Big thanks to Sabarco, our gold sponsor. That's Sabarco Car Group, Khalid Abdul Rahim. Thank you very much. Yusuf Grari there on the tail of the tape with the reach and height advantage. Reset Talal in the blue corner, Grari in the red. Me, Brian Lacey, alongside Phil Campbell and Kirik Jenes calling the action. And action is what I expect from this bout. 
Gray, definitely the taller guy, but Hassan Talal is thicker than a Snickers in there. How does he <laughs> make the 45 limit? This is the thing, though. When you look at their body types, their frames, you would assume Talal would be the more deadly knockout artist. Mm. But Gray has just got that X factor, that kiss of death on mm. the on the end of his hands. Really does strike technically well. What we saw there was indicative of his Thai style. Talal landed the kick. He throws one right back. It's like everything you can do, I'm going to do. But oh, Talal right in with the takedown. That is interesting. Grari was under the impression there was a gentleman's agreement that they would stand and test each other's striking. But Talal looking to get it to the mat early within the first minute of the first round, Kirik. He is a black belt in Kyokushin Karate. We do have perhaps later on a classic matchup of styles here muay thai versus kyokushin the strongest karate but he's also a purple belt in brazilian jiu-jitsu and he wants to try and take advantage of that here doing a good job of just solidifying position sitting down on the hips a little bit of gray nasty little elbows to the midsection there just to that underneath the ribs there of gray big pressure Head position again, that has been a theme of the fight so far tonight. Whoever can control where that head is, as you said, Phil, earlier on. Mm, invariably controls where the body goes. Again, just sitting in the half guard. Nice work to regain the knee shield from Gray. Yeah, working hard to try and make some space there. He's talked as well, Gray, about being difficult to be a professional fighter in the Lebanon. Just the sponsorships aren't there, the shows aren't there, the money's aren't there for the fights, but he has dedicated himself to this. He's doing class after class to try and make the money, try and do the, uh, make the money to make these dreams happen. And tonight, this is a huge stage for him to do that. What is the, What there is in Lebanon is heart. It's, it's a warrior culture. There, there's so many tremendous, over history and right now, there's so many tremendous fighters that come out of there. I think I've, I've never in my life met a Lebanese who was a, a coward. Woo! Oh, hot swing and a miss from Talal. That was like a fast pitch. No, but looking to try and set up that head and arm. Yeah. Just trying to free those legs. Very make space. Very difficult to get it from inside the guard. I have seen it done a couple of times. No, but that's why he's fighting so hard to try and get that. And, and equally, Garari trying to keep those legs under control. And if Talal can just incrementally kind of buck his hips up slowly, 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 he could find himself. Oh, oh transitions look at that. into the half guard. He said, forget incrementally. I'm just going to make a gap step oh, over. Oh, that looks tight. No, oh. Grari defends well. Talal actually sh shifted ever so slightly to, to the wrong direction. Had he wanted to close up that head arm triangle. One minute, 40 seconds left. And this top position, Grari Fan is so difficult to make space. As oh. I say that, he tries to get up. Now his back's been taken. Can he shuck off one hook? Oh, um, there we go. That's exactly where Gray wants to be. Nice knee to the body. Now looking, looking for a trip of his own. Interesting. You would think he'd want to separate or at least try and get some shots off from that, that close. Very interesting oh! strategy and it worked. That all came from the forward momentum of the hips. That yeah, was absolutely. absolutely beautiful. He sat into that, leaned into that as Tal oh. Oh, nice talk from Talane. <laughs> They're having a little bit of a chat, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> well, now, let's see if they separate. Talal trying to close that distance again. Double underhooks from Talal. But we have seen Gray managed to get an overhook. Grari does know his grappling. That switch to push those hips and get the uh, reverse, the takedown attempt. Just one example. Oh, oh, beautiful single leg. Lands right into the side control position. And again, Kirik, this fence causing problems for Grari. People ask why that te uh, takedown looked so seemingly easy couple of answers to it. One is timing. If he had done it a split second, like by a split, I mean a 30th of a second earlier or later, probably wouldn't have happened. But two, it's impossible to wrestle properly and strike properly. You can do one or the other. It's, there is no way to do both perfectly. By trying to hit your opponent, it also gives your opponent opportunities to take you down to the ground. Round one in the... <laughs> oh, <laughs> roll. <laughs> 
Gray absolutely loving it. Getting looked after by one of the best in the business. West Belfast's finest. Ryan Martin <laughs> doing the job here tonight, making his own Brave debut. And here we have some of the action. This was Talal moving in for that clinch. Talk us through this. And I, th I think this took Gray by surprise. As you said, I think he was expecting to stand and kind of go mano a mano on the feet. But it was very intelligent by Hassan Talal. Initiate the striking exchange, then s slip in for the takedown. And there's the beautiful hip thrust, that forward propelling yes. momentum from Gray. Whereas most, usually with a sprawl, you would just shoot straight backwards. He put the hips into his opponent. Very smart. So we are set for round number two. Kirik, what do you want to see from this man, Yusuf? I think we're going to see him do a little bit better in this round. Yusuf Greri, very heavily muscled, as you can see across from it. But that muscle takes a lot of oxygen, and five minutes is a long, long time. I think we may see this round turn around. Yusuf Greri just nodding that no blink stare across the cage to Hassan Talal. Talal in the blue corner. Greri. In the red, oh, heavy oh, leg kick. Oh, <laughs> looks at his opponent as if to say, ah, you felt that, didn't you? Oh, power shots coming forward, trying to make a statement early on. There's nastiness in those kicks. They're not range finders. And Hassan Talal, let's see if he uses some of those winging hooks to close that distance. Oof. Oh, he's starting to cause a little bit of damage in that leg. And it, you can see Talal deep Ooh. breaths as well. Oof like to see Gray maybe take a little bit of step step out to the like a, a diagonal step to the side so he can really cut that leg kick in you can see he's been very aware of the range oh steps in with his own trying to shirk off gets the underhook well and lands a big knee to the body double underhooks he's got to make space he's got to circle and get Just out as you say he must have been oh, listening oh but oh, what a lateral, lateral drop. drop beautiful into side control once again and just as we said Pagrelli trying to find his way out. He just needed to disconnect, but that connection gave Hassan Talal all he needed for that lateral drop. Fabulous technique from Fearless. It also provides him an opportunity to catch his breath for just a little bit, let those muscles get some oxygen so he can go back to work unfettered. I will say, Phil, he, he did look tired. Yeah, he did look a little bit labored when he was, he might be switching to a north-south choke here. No, well, he does have the grip. But Santa Lau's doing well to defend, or sorry, oh. Yusuf Garay doing well to defend. Caught in a reverse triangle of sorts, probably. Needs to be wary of a triangle oh, here. And maybe a triangle, look at that, he's got that over, can he push that arm across? Looking to get this, this would be amazing if the two strikers, whoa. Nice push away there, but look at that, like a wet blanket straight back on him. Hassan Talal with that takedown. Covering the distance so quickly as well. I think he, he had that urgency because he knows this is where he has to control Greri. And still talking to each other in there, Phil. I'm going to go out on a lemon and say Greri is kind of trying to goad him into standing up. But Hassan Talal's in the ascendancy when they've been on the ground, so he has no reason to stand the fight up. Almost halfway through. This second round, oh, Kimura attempt possibly. We've talked about this before, Kirik. It's not just a, a, a threat for a submission. You can use this to make space to try and get the sweep and, or to stand up, reverse position. Right now, it's highly unlikely with that hand hooked on deep, so deep underneath the, the hip. It's highly unlikely to be able to finalize. Would be better to use it right now to try to stand up. Trying to create a little bit of distance, but it's difficult when you have someone who's so muscular and so dense like Hassan Talal on top of you. So physically strong, and you talk about that BJJ purple belt. When somebody knows how to impose that size, that pressure on you, it's... A weight distribution ah, is key, yeah. yeah. May try a little back step here just to solidify position. Gray on his hip, doing the right things. Nice, nice little elbows. Yeah, nice short elbows. They are legal. The, the six, the nine to three elbow there. If that was coming straight down. Then that could be deemed an illegal shot for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> That's a debate for another day, Brian. <laughs> Can we talk about that later? <laughs> Still imposing himself. Not doing much with this position, though, Kirik. 
He's not. I believe it's a matter of conditioning. Muscles of that size you can't go all out for three times five. You've got to pace yourself. Oh, someone's cut. I oh, badly cut. That might have been one of those pot yeah, elbows we saw, Brian. It looks like Tell out. Mm. Bleeding from the head, can't see where. Yeah, quite furiously as well. Look at the drips coming down there. Oh, he's leaking like a badly installed kitchen top. <laughs> One of the most effective elbows in the sport is not like you get in Muay Thai where it's from the outside. It's a push elbow. You push in your opponent's head, release it, lay an elbow in there where your hand was, boom, you get a cut. Wow, and this cut is so bad. Deki Larkin wants the doctor to come and have a look. Oh, Hassan Talal's not standing while he's checking the, the cut. And depending on where this is, if this I is right on the hairline? Right, but I think it's lower down. I think it's on the bridge of the eyebrow, the two eyebrows. The positioning of the cut is of paramount importance. A large cut can look terrible and not be dangerous. A small cut can be quite dangerous for a fighter's long-term health. We've got world-class medical officials in there, and they're going to make the determination. Do not let the visuals put you off on this. If it's small and they stop it, they didn't overreact. And we'll have a look. We might get it. No, this is after the fact you can see the blood but this was the reason Deki wanted to have a look at that they're going to re-establish that position oh they've started already <laughs> and now if you're Yusuf Gare, are you going to purposefully target that little spot yeah, with look, a little pot shot he's up elbows? just throwing he just wants to anything where you can slightly open that up and there's something at that with your opponents, you can feel how they feel. You, like, if, they, if they feel tired or they're losing strength, Kirik, and maybe Greri is getting a little read on Talal now. It is indeed. When your opponent tires, it's, it's doubly good because it adds energy to you. If you're equally tired, you're equally tired. But when you can feel your opponent fade, it gives you a boost of something like adrenaline. It's double good. That's what we're seeing right here. And Gray is the type of man who loves his opponent's blood slathered all over his chest. <laughs> he is a warrior indeed. Brian Coyle there in the cage. He's got some work to do on Talal. Let's have a look at that cut. That is a huge cut. And the way he's dropped down to his knees there in the corner tells me that fatigue is definitely a big factor here, Brian. With, without a doubt. And we saw that at the start before he got that beautiful lateral drop. There was some of his demeanor, his movement, labored in shots. But it's been accentuated now. There we have some of the action after they re the restart. Look yes. at the blood there. And that's it. Seeing red has reignited. Yusuf Greri. I'd love to get a proper look at this cut now, Phil. Great job there from Brian Coyle. You can see that is right on the the bulb of the brow. Now, if anything, that cut should act like a magnet to the hands and feet and knees of Yusuf Gare. That should be the pinpoint spot which he should be looking to attract those hands to. And without that cut, Kirik, we'd be looking at two rounds which pretty much you would give to Talal, but now this makes round three very interesting indeed. And started with his hands on his knees, gentlemen. Oh, and Greri looking for the takedown. Those are some big arms wrapped around that neck, but the head positioning is such that that guillotine is not likely to be finalized. He is hanging on to it though. Greri's trying to stay composed. Greri could do with getting a hand in, getting that air scrap on the, the, the choking arm. Look how tired Talal looks. Mm. And with him trying to, with having such bulging biceps like that, they're bound to be full of lactic acid right now. They're yep. bound to feel heavy. Yep. And now Guerrero working hard to try and get this position and like using those short shots. And this is where the cut starts to impede on top. Mm -hmm. The blood goes down onto your opponent. When you are laid on your back, there's a good chance, especially where that is, that that's going to fill up your eyes, affect your vision. There yeah. are a few feelings in this sport more miserable than losing your conditioning and being hit at the same time that's exactly what we're seeing what an effort being made here from Greri he has literally seen red and he is trying trying to claim victory here tonight you called it exactly Phil he is working to try and open that cut up but he's put himself in another bad position uh, the crimson mask of Hassan Talal acting like the red flag to the bull that is Youssef Gouré. And that blood now makes them so slippy. It is like oil on each other's bodies. 
Look at the short shots. And look at the... Oh, look. reversal. Wow. Oh, fantastic to... job by Fearless. And that shows his heart and his will to win. A little look in each other's <laughs> eyes. Still talking to each other. I wish we could mic up the fighters sometimes. I'm going to go out on a limb and say after this fight, I reckon we could be looking at two new best friends. <laughs> Still throwing these short shots. <laughs> you have to give credit to Techie Lurkin. No break in the action. Big lad, pop that back in and pop let's go. Back in. Let's crack on. Deep breaths now from Yusuf on bottom as well. But he's got to find a way back to his feet. Oh, because Talal's not doing much. Oh, may hit the switch. No, Oof. doesn't quite do it. I'd like to see him get try and scoot his hips out from underneath. Because he can't, he's not going to be winning the fight in this position. It's very rare do you see a fighter win a fight off his back. Realistically, I can only think of Bas Rutten versus Kevin Randleman as the most prominent example. This as well, Talal is giving nothing. Oh, nearly a little Use switch. It. Beautiful. That oh, is great the technique. Back. That is great technique. Just happy to land pot shots. Needs to keep oh, this. Oh, to oh, 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 Yusuf Gray looking to finish this. That no, is so it. Oh. it. Wow. Larkin calls an end to this fight. Hassan Fearless Talal did not know what was happening. He took a clean shot. He has the heart of an Iraqi. Thought he was still in the fight. Tried to keep fighting, but the fight has been ended by Decky Larkin. Wow, what a fight. What a wonderfully justifiable stoppage too, because that knee landed flush, took the wind right out of the seals. Boom. Ba -ba -boom. Boom. right to the face. And let's just give a huge shout out for the Yusuf Guerreri. What a turnaround. Two hard rounds. Open that cut up in the second round. And you said it. You said it, Phil. That would be as red rag to the ball and exactly that. The switch that what I want, I hope they show the replay of, is from bottom. The way he got the switch. Got the underhook. Uh, but you watch yeah, what he does yeah, with yeah. his feet. The flip he does to turn it around to get that back position. Not content on taking the back. Got it back to his feet. Opened up that knee. Boom. That's the smile of a man who has earned victory through the fires of defeat. My goodness, what a fantastic turnaround. For those of you wondering how Decky Larkin made his decision, he was looking for the presence of two elements. One, danger, and two, a lack of intelligent defense. Putting up your hands, for example, is not an intelligent defense. He has to see the losing fighter doing something intelligent to get out of there. He saw neither of these. He rightly stopped the fight, but huge respect to both fighters, huge respect to Hassan Fearless Talal for trying to keep going for his good, for his health and safety. Deki Larkin the, rightly stopped the fight. The coach of Hassan Talal just came over to Deki Larkin and shook his hand. That wow. tells you everything you need to know about that stoppage. Yeah, absolutely. What a fight. My goodness, we have had so many moments already inside the, the brave cage and that is one I'll remember for a very very long time a stunning performance and I, I hope we get a replay of how he turned it around he's been trapped under Talal that huge frame of Talal in rounds one and rounds two he was able to reverse it and it was a lovely little bit of technique he used to do that and then he got it back to his uh, feet and that knee bang the flag of Lebanon that he wears and flies so high, so proudly. Talal still on the stool. I think we may announce this. And there's the cut as well. You see the cut. Wow. And those are from elbows on the bottom, mm. on the ground. We talked about how he hits pads with his elbows. <laughs> That's just the power and precision that this man has in his locker. Blades in spades, my goodness. Every effort is being made for Hassan Talal to walk to the center. All right, Brave Nation, another amazing bout. This comes to an end at two minutes and 53 seconds of the third round. Your winner by TKO. Yusuf, the Widowmaker, Gregory!
Unreal stuff. He called for it back in April of 2019. He asked for this fight. Now, in 2021, March of 2021, his wish came true. And what an ending, a fairy tale ending. Under such pressure from that man Talal. But he found a way to win, and that's so important, isn't it, Kirik? For fighters, just no quit. Do not, even under the, the worst pressure, find a way to win. Brian, it is mixed martial arts, combat sports in general, do offer the most profound life lessons. And one of them is don't quit. We actually saw that from Talal too. He didn't quit even in defeat. My heart, my respect goes out to both of these fighters. Both of them represented their nations to an extraordinary extent. We've seen some of the powerful kicks, that Muay Thai style. It was the elbows on the ground. The lateral drop there from Talal, it was so beautifully executed. And these are the elbows, these are the elbows that opened up the cut and the cut that changed the game. This is the end of that first round. It just ignited the spirit of Greri. And here again he gets taken down. And this is the end, Kirik. Wow, what a knee. Decky Larkin saw that knee, was considering to stopping it, and he did it the exact right moment. And look at this Decky Larkin step. It will have another loop. And bang. Wow. Stunning stuff. Still unaware of what's going on. This bout is sponsored by Brave Energy Drink. Only the best to power your best effort. Fortune favors the brave. French Syrian sensation Michael Al Jarouge is looking to add fire to the flyweight division as he searches for a win against Azat Maksum, an undefeated fighter with a lot of star potential. Coming up next, Michael the Soldier Al Jarouge faces off against Azat Maksum in a catchweight bout of 58.5 kilograms. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight is electric. Shokran to all of our fans watching around the world and seeing what Brave Combat Federation is all about. Let's welcome our next warriors into the Brave CF 48 cage. All right, Brave Nation, this next battle is three five minute rounds in a catchweight bout of 58.5 kilograms. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of 11 wins and no losses. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs already 58.1 kilograms. Representing Octagon Fight Team and fighting out of Kazakhstan, please welcome Azak Kazak Maksu. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of seven wins and three losses. He stands 170 centimeters tall and weighs already 58.2 kilograms. Representing Old School Academy and fighting out of France by way of Syria. Give it up for Michael, the soldier. Al Jaru! Your referee is a bandit, Decky Larkin. Tail of the tape there, the 23 year old from France. Slight reach and height disadvantage against Azat Maxim from Kazakhstan. 26 years of age. Azat Maxim in the blue corner. Al Jaru. In the red, we are underway. Five minutes, three five minute rounds set in front of us. Should it take that amount of time? I think these are incredibly two well matched young talents. The soldier Al Jarui called such because every time he gets his name called in the cage, he turns to salute his coach, who he considers a leader. As a Maxim, so well rounded though, taking the outside, trying to. Stay out there. It's going to be very interesting, Phil, to see 
if Al Jaru looks to get this to a mat. Oh, and as I say, that is Azat Maxim. And now we see, still in the center of the cage, Al Jarouj trying to figure out the puzzle that is Azat Maxim. Oof. Although, aesthetically, Al Jarouj does look like the bigger fighter. And at 26 years of age, Azat Maxim is the older here of the two. Slightly more experience as well, but you look at the finishing rate of Al Jarouj. Oh, he's oh. been dropped. That right hand is clean. The soldier is wobbled. Oh, he's clinging on to the leg here. Can Kazak get any kind of forward momentum continuing here? Short shots. Al Jaru's looking to get this to the mat. Oh, look at that take. A oh, but reversed beautifully by Kazak Woo. into the mount. Al Jaru escapes oh, out the a back. Scramble. Transition to transition, gentlemen. Out the back door comes the soldier after. Exchanging positions there. Who said flyweight points weren't exciting? Again, just in the center of the cage right now, trying to figure one another out. Kazakh with that stiff popping jab. Al Jaru trying to find a way inside, changing levels, trying to get a bite on his opponent. Throws up a nice little lead head kick. Alderu moving forward. Big leaping hook from Alderu. Again, changing levels, trying to get a little bit of a read on Kazakh. Clock is ticking. The recovery of Alderu is remarkable. Got caught clean. Shaking those cobwebs away. Well, if anything that speaks to just how good his conditioning is. Oh, oh, an oh. uppercut on the way. Very nice uppercut from Al -Jaru. Still walking his man down is Al -Jaru. Trying to get a little bit of forward momentum. What have you seen so far, Kirik, that has impressed you? Two tremendous fighters. I've also seen a tremendous illustration of the fact that the scarier looking guy isn't necessarily the scarier one. This is mixed martial arts. There's a heavy reliance on technique and leverage. But so far, two tremendous fights. An exquisite piece of matchmaking here at Brave. Al Jarouj versus Maxim, stunning stuff, and it's living up to the billing as well. So technically high level. Even look at that level change, looking like he's going for the takedown, then Phil, and then stepping up with the left. Yeah, just comes outside a little bit, comes over with the, with the lead hook. And you I see the difference in their shots, Kirik. It's much more straight shots from Maxim, whereas you've got those looping hooks coming from Al Jarouj. Kazakh is set down just a little bit too hard. It was slowing him down. I'm not sure he can finalize this. Oh, that's beautiful oh. work from Al Jarouj. Defends the takedown, lands a lead hook as he pivots away. Exquisite work. Say magnifique from the Frenchman. <laughs> that is technically so high level. And that was a very clean entry as well from Maxim. Look, he's constantly moving. He's never a stationary target. So impressed with this young Kazakh fighter. I think both these men mirror each other so well. The movement, the movement between these two. The footwork, the choice of shots. Oh! Oh, was he wobbled a little bit? again. Oh, no. Stays on his feet. And on the single. A takedown would be absolutely huge at this point of the fight. Fabulous round from the soldier in Kazakh. Really high level stuff from both these two. An absolute treat to be sat cage side with. Hard to, hard to separate them right now, Phil. Inseparable. That fight, or sorry, that first round had absolutely everything. I think the most pivotal point would be the fact that Maxim landed that strike. Now, some beautiful work here in the clinch. That Watch was absolutely reversal. exquisite. Just used the momentum and propulsion created by Al Jarou to land in the dominant position. 
Wow, Fort Arad does not disappoint. Once again, we are treated to some spectacular action here at Brave 48. I so often end around wishing I could see a little bit more or a little bit less from each fighter. All I want to see more of is more of both of these fighters. Well, your wish is about to come true, Kirik. I will grant you that. A potential 10 minutes is my gift to you, my friend. Brave Combat Federation <laughs> making <laughs> dreams come true. And no one had to rub a lamp. Fantastic. <laughs> Arabian night after all, gentlemen. <laughs> oh, mm. bravo, bravo. I was going to make an Aladdin the cage joke there, but <laughs> it's, it's gone. It's gone. The moment's passed. I know oh. Deki Lark is stopping the fight because of the bad jokes, I believe. But there <laughs> we go. Now just getting that. Replacing the mouthpiece. Oh, I think he's docked as a point, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. So as at Maxim in the blue corner, Michael Aljaru in the red. It's round two underway here at Brave 48. And you could literally cut the tension between these two fighters with a knife. They know that at either second, one is only a moment away. Oh, that. Oh, and you thought he had, you thought he had lost the takedown. I thought he had missed it. I thought he hadn't set that up properly like before. But still, Al Giroud makes his way back to his feet. It just pops back up quicker than a pirate up Pac-Man. It's fantastic to watch. Interesting display and footwork. The soldier is distance managing from the inside and the outside. Kazakh circles a little bit, Thank strikes you. off an angle. The clean work as well from the strikes, those straight, strike, straight strikes coming from Azat Maxim. Oh, it's beautiful covering up there as well by Al Jaru. Oh. So evenly matched are these two competitors. This is phenomenally tight. Oh, beautiful double jab to the overhand. Oh, a little faint there. That's... Interesting, getting a read, getting a little bite there off Al Jaru. Mm -hmm. That's in uh, that's in the playbook for later. Might fake the takedown, come over the top. Again, triple jab to street. triple jab. There you go, triple ripple. And the boxing of Kazakhstan has been highlighted with the likes of Triple G. Such oh, the right oh, hand got him. him back to his feet. Is Maxim looking to survive with the grappling? The soldier bringing the firepower, but Kazakh maybe turning it around already. Needs to be wary of the guillotine choke here. And Al Jaru has a big grip around the neck. Survival instincts kicking in from Kazakh's Maxim. <laughs> this fight is ridiculous, gentlemen. Separation may be coming. Al Jaru trying to push the head down. Good heavy hips there. Exactly. From that. Al Jaru. Just the, the technique of grappling there. Oh, solid uppercut as well. And it, look at that takedown, though. Little trip, raises the legs, take the ankle from under him. But knowing what we know of Al Jaru at the moment, he's not going to stay down for too long. <laughs> Just as I say that, pivots into his own position for a takedown. This ah. is back and forth. As back and forth as you can get, Kirik. If the soldier does get a takedown here, I'm interested to see if it gets in instantly reversed or not. It's a big question in my mind right now. Can he get the takedown and then secure it? And this, you can see deep breaths from Maxim. It's a little bit of blood coming out of the nose of Maxim. Yeah, I think that was from the uh, the big shot that dropped him to his knees, did well to survive. But now, this is going to be a, a war of attrition as well. I was going to say, surely this type of pace is not sustainable for all three rounds. It sure is, is absolutely humanly impossible. Oh! Oh! <laughs> this is oh! bananas, gentlemen. And Al Jaru manages to end up on top somehow. Oh, oh lands a big knee. Touches his nose there. As that Maxim, but still. Just to check it was there, I imagine. Gentlemen, I'm not quick enough to process exactly what's going on, let alone tell the audience watching at home what's <laughs> going on. Oh, a little clash of heads there. I will say, looking tired is As at Maxim. Oh! Lands one of his own, but gets caught over the top by Al Jaru. This is... Very, very impressive indeed from Al Jaru. Philly's growing into this fight. The momentum feels like it is switching towards the Frenchman. I'd have to agree with every takedown that he defends, with every transition that he then transitions into a dominant position. He's growing and growing into the fight. And now he's opening up his striking as well. Confidence is king in there, Kirik, right? 
It is as is national pride. Michael the soldier Algerou proudly walks out with the flags both of France and of Syria. Slowly edging forwards, 30 seconds left in this second round. Oh, to be a judge in mixed martial arts. <laughs> Again, fainting with that takedown, dropping to the knees twice. They're getting a bite both times from Al Jarou. Feel like a little bit of a third, maybe second or third wind coming in for Azat Maxim. Just maybe recovering from that heavy shot he took. Oh, just <laughs> thinking about the trip take time. And a beautiful little apology. Hey, didn't mean to go for it after the bell. Little instinct kicked in. No hard feelings, no hard feelings taken. It's like, hey, we'd be beating the brakes off each other for two <laughs> rounds, but that, that was out of order. I'm sorry. <laughs> My bad, buddy. Let me give you a hug. And here we go. Let's have a look at this. This was the, one of the takedown attempts, but look how he gets back to his feet, Al Jarou. This is the overhand. Covering distance beautifully with the jab. Just boom, jab to the head, jab to the body, right hand. That was sumptuous, Ooh. gentlemen. Sumptuous and accurate. And here we go, oh. another one of these belly to belly. But then Al Jarou just says, nope, I'm not having any of that. Al Jarou just... He is just so strong in those positions. It is. We're getting an incredible display of strength versus leverage and technique. Right now, I think strength is carrying the day. Slow off his stool is Azat, Azat Maxim. That nose, I believe, is broken and maybe broken again. Takes a true warrior to walk out under that condition, but... The Kazakh is a true warrior. Round three set to go underway. Me, Brian Lacey, alongside Phil Campbell and Kirik Jenis, absolutely salivating at the potential of what this five minutes could bring. Nice to see a little bit of a hug. A little bit of a hug from the boys, because I think they know after those two rounds that they've been oh. in something a little bit special. Speaking of special, Solid. nice shot landed by Maxum. Equally, that oh. Was a, oh, nice, nice high kick there. Lead high kick coming from Al Jarou. Guys, I'm always looking for a knockout or a stoppage, but this fight is so awesome. I hope it keeps going on and on oh. and on. Oh. Both land in heavy leather, and it's not just big winging shots. It's technically set up shots, guys. Absolutely. Picking the shots, opening up the angles with their movement. Everything that you want to see in high-level mixed martial arts is on a plate. Oh, oh Jesus And look at that. Now he's dropped. That could this be is it. Wow. That is it. Wow. As that Maxim answers the questions, the right hand down the middle. You said, Phil, this that has everything. It now has one of the knockouts of the year on it as well. That was not, as I said, it was not a wild shot. It was technically so wonderfully proficient. The jab to the straight to fight ending winning performance. Ladies and gentlemen, Azat Kazakh Maxo makes a statement in his Brave Combat Federation debut. And you can still see Al Jarou still on wobbly legs. And for me, the moment when he dropped, you can see how, what a moment that was because of the way Maxim followed it up. Talk us through this, Phil. Oh, just double jab to set it up and then clinches just ensures the position. He could have walked away in that position, but did the right thing, established the position. Wow. Absolutely beautiful. This is a great angle. You can see Al Jarou compromised here and Deki Larkin straight on top of that. Double but jab straight, boom. And look at the way he knows he's got to use this to get the clinch. Straight away jumps and it doesn't just admire his work, Follows Pulls it, it up, up, yeah. Gets the finish. Brilliant stuff from the young fighter from Kazakhstan. And Kirik, you've talked about it before. That getting these runs, getting these consistent wins, becoming consistent in the cage, 12 and 0 says it all. The bar was raised tonight with his opponent. He jumped over it. It absolutely did. It absolutely was. But what I want to talk to you two about right now is the simple fact that you often get highly technical wrestlers who've got basic striking. And you've got highly technical strikers who've got basic wrestling, often just wrestling defense. This was highly technical wrestling and highly technical striking to an extent I have rarely seen.
Uh, wherever the matchmaker plucked this match from, I give him absolute full credit because I watched them both back on tape separately and I saw how technical they were, but the way they matched up, they strike for strikes, uh, uh, grappling for grappling, takedown for takedown, every single thing that they met in the middle with, they matched each other until that one moment, Phil. Well, that's all it took was one defining moment and it happened to be that Azad Kazakh Maxim was the perpetrator of that moment and writes his name into the win column. Well, uh, Azad Maxim has written his name into the win column and has put everybody on notice. I see a bright, bright future for that man. 12 and 0, let's make it official. Let's hand it to Carlos Kramer. All right, Brave Nation, another phenomenal battle inside the Brave CF48 cage. This comes to an end at 56 seconds of the third round. Your winner by knockout from Kazakhstan, Azat Kazakh Maksum. And there we have it, 56 seconds of round number three. They were neck and neck. One thing separated them both. It was the right hand of that man, Azat Maxim. How impressed are you with this young man, Phil? Borderline speechless, which for me is absolutely <laughs> huge. To come in and do that after having only fought 22 days ago. Yep. That's absolutely huge. And to be involved in a fight like that, that had so many near misses, so many knockdowns, where so much energy was exerted, and still be able to follow that up with a knockout win, Incredible. Incredible indeed. Unbelievable adjectives like that just flow off the tongue when you think about this fight. And for Kazakhstan as well, I have had the pleasure of being in Kazakhstan for some events in Almaty. The fans there are unreal. The, the, the growth of mixed martial arts is absolutely evident, not just on the professional scene, but the amateur rankings as well. Kirik, what does this mean for this man to put himself on the map with that Kazakhstan flag flying high? on the Brave roster. Absolutely huge. People think of mixed martial arts as being an individual sport. If it was truly an individual sport, you could get stars out of anywhere, but it's not. It's a team sport, and that team requires deep infrastructure. It requires access to resources, national support, a coaching base, sparring partners in Kazakhstan, as you can see right in front of you, has it all. And here we see the finish, the right hand, Followed it up, Deki Larkin having to step in. One more time, bang, down the middle. Look at the urgency to get this position. Once he got it, only needed a couple of shots. No unnecessary damage taken. That hand. This bout is brought to you by Brave Gym. Training for mind, body, and spirit. Brave, it's more than a gym. Bahrain's Murtaza Talha is back in action as the two-time amateur world champion looks for his third pro win against Cameron Maytees, who's coming for his Brave CF debut on the back of a six-fight winning streak. Coming up next, Murtaza Talha meets Cameron Ginger Ninja Maytees in a catchweight battle of 88 kilograms. All right, Brave Nation, this next battle is three five-minute rounds in a catchweight battle of 88 kilograms. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of six wins and one loss. He stands 182 centimeters tall and weighs already 87.4 kilograms. Representing Allegiance Fight and Fitness Academy and fighting out of South Africa. Please welcome Cameron Ginger Ninja Matties! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of two wins and no losses. He stands 185 centimeters tall and weighs already 87.9 kilograms. Representing KHK MMA and fighting out of the magnificent Kingdom of Bahrain. Give it up for Murtaza Talha. Your referee is the bandit, Decky Larkin. 
Looking at the tail of the tape here, 28 years against 24, Menkes versus Mataza. And I'm going to question the tape measure there. Mataza coming out as the taller of the two. It's the battle of the gingers. There can only be one. <laughs> and the stare that Menkes was giving Mataza as he entered the cage didn't take his eyes off him. Menkes in the blue corner, Mataza in the red. Menkes very subtly, sudden, subtly feinting with the hip. He's th turning that hip a little bit, occasionally throwing the full kick, trying to see what his opponent's going to do. Another minute in or so, he can download that information, possibly use it to his advantage. Oh, beautiful frequency of strikes to the head, then the body. Oh, and look at this. Menkes looking for the takedown. I'll be so impressed if he can finish this against the grappling of Mataza. But what we're seeing with Murtaza, as we've discussed, is just how calm he is for someone who's only undertaking his third professional fight. Usually when you see amateurs until here transition to the pros, it's usually by around fight five, six, seven that they really find their feet. Murtaza has just transitioned so seamlessly. And Menke's in working hard to try and get this takedown. He is so physically strong, always comes in great shape as well. Watch back some of his fights and there was tournaments that he was in and that he competed multiple times, mm -hmm. multiple rounds. And has incrementally been dropping weight and dropping weight. I think he has eyes on competing at middleweight and wow. making that his prospective professional home. Short shots, elbows, patting the side of the head there is Mataza. Mataza does have that big overhook. May try and slam down on that and escape out. Looking to turn the corner here. Can he drag him to the mat? Initially, I thought he was going to attempt the trip, but he's been in heavy on that single. Mataza staying calm, but he's already reddening up the, the side of the oh, head. Oh, that's the it. Oh, he's dropped him. Wow, this that's that's power. Wow. Once again, the ginger gorilla gets the job done. Flawless performance from the big man. Well, that is just... Unreal, the power, the torque he's able to get from that position. The elbow to the head dropped his opponent. Look at this. And Menkes is still on the ground. Menkes is so powerful, so tough. We've seen him in wars before, but that says it all. Mataza Talal, stunning. Stunning, yeah, there's very little else the, you can say. It. The, the sky is the limit for this young man, and what I absolutely love about him he is Coming from the regions that he comes from, there's a very quiet humbleness about them. He has a real world-class personality to match his world-class fighting style. And there's the finish. Stunning, stunning, stunning. I said earlier, the power he's got is difficult to see at first. It helps in sumo to be big. Akibono is 600 pounds. You look at him, you know it. Murtaza Talha is just as strong as Aki Bono is big. It's just a little bit hard to see, but now Brave Nation and the world, you got to see the power of Murtaza Talha. That is three and O for this young man. Taking him on <laughs> our 15 fight win streak. Unreal stuff, unreal stuff. And checking his elbow. <laughs> is my elbow okay from <laughs> smashing it off the head of another professional fighter? There's not going to be a lot of people raising their hand to fight this guy. I can only think of, of one other suitable ginger matchup that we could make under the brave banner, Phil. I'll arm Phil. Oh, no, Thorne. I'm retired. No, no, <laughs> I, oh, long retired. Even just the way he looked down the camera there put the fear of God into me. No. What a talent. What a moment as well. And again, let's what a finish. Elbows. Why, while, so, why someone's in on a single? Why someone's trying to take you down. Brilliant stuff. Let's make it official. Let's hand it to the man in the middle, Carlos Kramer. Brave Nation, another epic battle that was absolute fire. This ends at 1 minute, 51 seconds of the first round. Your winner, by knockout, from KHK MMA in the Kingdom of Bahrain, Murtaza Talha! There we have it, 3 and 0 oh as a professional. That man, Matalza Talha. Absolutely amazing performance and finish once again. Three professional fights, Phil. Three finishes. Yeah, it's just, I'm, I'm actually sitting back a little bit in awe of what he just accomplished here. And it's the calm with which he does everything. It's a, it's, he looks so chilled out and reserved, but when he needs to, oh my God, does he put the hammer down. 
And, and these the elbows, they don't look like they're covering up. They don't, he's not winding up on them, but it's the precision, pinpoint accuracy that he's landing them with. And you said it as well. It took Menkes a while to get back to his feet. That's just testament to the power. And remember, gentlemen, this was not Mortaza Tala being fed a tomato can. This broke a six fight win streak at the professional level in only his third fight. Absolutely extraordinary performance, and I was expecting nothing less. And again, we get another little look at the finish. Amazing stuff. And Phil said, you're almost in awe. And it does feel like we are watching something special, doesn't it, Kirik? We are watching something special, and we're watching a beautiful representative of the Bahraini people, as I say over and over again. Bahraini people are the kindest in the world, and as you can tell, they are also warriors. This bout is sponsored by Brave Energy Drink. Only the best to power your best effort. Fortune favors the brave. Abdel Mumin M. Sat will be looking for his fourth straight win in his Brave CF debut when he takes on Nkosi in the ballet, one of the brightest young stars in the division. Coming up next, Abdel Mumin M. Sat is welcomed by Nkosi the future and the ballet in a bantamweight contest. All right, Brave Nation, don't blink. This next battle is three five-minute rounds in the Bantamweight division. Brave Nation, introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of three wins and one loss. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs already 61.6 kilograms. Representing Attila MMA and fighting out of South Africa. Please welcome Nkosi, the future, and Debele. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of six wins and three losses. He stands 175 centimeters tall and weighs already 61.5 kilograms. Fighting out of Morocco, give it up. For Abdel Mumen Masate! Your referee is the bandit, Decky Larkin. Big thanks to our hospitality partner, Nordic Palace and Spa. We look at the tail of the tape, and Cozy and Debele with that height and reach advantage. How chilled out does Cozy look pre fight? Unreal. Even just having a little bit of a, a glimpse at his movement as well as he was hearing his opponent announced. What a spectacular matchup this is set to be. Masate in the red corner and the ballet in the blue. He's we are off. He's deceptively long and rangy. You don't realize just how far away you can be from him and still get caught with the shots. <laughs> that karate style that he comes from, that... The way he can cover distance, I mean, he's got long, long limbs as it is. Look at the length of that jab, that straight laser-like jab coming at you. But on top of that, he can get in and out huge distances in a split second. Do you remember Dalsim from Street Fighter? <laughs> I remember the <laughs> yes. Both guys just trying to get a little bit of a read on one another. Masate fighting very smartly right now. He's circling, 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 not letting his opponent get him lined up to throw those shots. Yeah, Masate, when you look back at his other fights, the way he looks to get it to the ground is throw big hooks to get a connection to, to lock it up. You've got to be so careful with en Enderbele. Oh, Dangerous. big shot over the top. Yeah, with that stunning stuff. Oof, even Again. just the range covered with that jab. Such... Like you think you're out of harm's way, and next thing you get a big old brave glove to the face. Yeah, it's such a stifling weapon as well because it, it takes you out of your rhythm. It stops your forward motion, and it comes from nowhere as well. So your timing. Oh, look at the right hand off that jump knee. Like the jump knee was the feint that set up the race. Yes. Now the clinch. Oh, but down. Oh, that looked like a little bit of a guard pull to me. I think Masate was trying to... Oh, oh and Kose <laughs> telling him to get back to the feet. No, 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 you're not getting me down to the mat that easily. 
It's such a simple it's, thing, gentlemen, but it so often doesn't happen. So often fighters jump into that clinch when they shouldn't. Oh, Dan Cousy get rocked a little bit there. I think that was a head clash, actually, Phil, when they came in. He went forward. But and Cousy with the takedown. And he's got to be careful here. That jiu-jitsu game, he's got a very active guard off his back, Masate. Oh, that head clash may have actually caught Masate right in the eye. Oh, he's compromised, gentlemen. I can't quite he's trying see to work, that. Yes. Trying to work for an arm bar. Oof. Oh, that cut has definitely compromised the vision. You can see him trying to blink it out, but he's trying to work oh, for an arm bar. For the arm bar. That's, uh, the elbow's okay, but he might switch that round. Looking for the triangle. And Cozy's got to posture back. Keep that head behind the knees. Sit back on his heels just as he's doing. Very intelligent. He can't be diving in like that. It's very dangerous. Such an active guard off the bottom. And yet yeah, you can see that cut. And it was off the fact that Masate bounced off the cage. So as, oh, looking for the submission yet again. And Cozy doing the right thing by keeping his head on the outside of the thigh to transition into side control. I actually, is it Masate that's cut? I think it's Masate over the, it's the blood. Yes, Masate, yeah. yeah. Potential for knees to the Me body here. Coming. And he has these long legs, oh, dropping, rolling, straight back into guard, but great work from Enderbele. Needs to be aware of that triangle again. Masate has the wrist. Very smooth pass to half guard. Oh, trying to leg lock, lock up a leg. Coming. Ooh, working his way down. The danger with a leg lock in this position is you have to commit fully to it with both hands, which then leaves your face vulnerable to a myriad of face punching. Oh, you can see that is a cut just on the left eyebrow there. Still working for that, digging deep, trying to stretch that. Left leg of Enderbele, but as you oh. said, Phil, just taking damage as he tries. Trying to creep that guard up the back of Nkose. Nkose needs to posture just a little bit. He can't be in that no man's land space. How impressed are you with the, the, the attacks from the bottom, Kirik? Extremely. This is obviously a world-class guard we're looking at. And it's happening in the face of heavy pressure from strikes. Uh, he's touching his eye. Something happened to uh, Masate's eye there. I don't know whether that's just blood going in, but he, he kept touching it, and that's what caused him to turn over. I think it's the blood. I don't think he's able to see out oh, of that eye. Oh, that kick there. That. Accidental but illegal kick. Looking yeah. Victory roll, looking for trying that to work bar. In. Oh, he's May try and work he, into a heel hook here. He is trying that, and you can actually still get it from... Could go inside out on it. Yeah. This is... Not the sort of game you want to play with a world-class grappler like uh, Masate. This is the kind of work Nkosi and Debele needs if he wants to take over the world. He's got to face a high-level level grappler like that and hold his own. And you can see Masate trying to free up those legs. And Kose showing that he can hang with a really decent grappler. As again, I was so, so impressed. Oh, he's looking to lean back. Not enough time there, but... Very interesting first round, gentlemen. Great first round. We saw the strike in there from uh, Enderbele, but the active guard, the attack after attack coming forward, and you saw that this is, I think this might, no, there's a, they were going straight back when the head clashing. Masate is making those movements. You'll see it here. He bounces off the cage. No, we no, that was the wrong one. Strong work from Enderbele. But like you said, just an intriguing matchup. <laughs> Gentlemen, if you're in Nkosi's corner, what do you tell him? If I, what I tell him is don't go down to the ground. Keep it standing, son. Just checking the, the eye there. It does look a little compromised. You see a slightly forlorn look on the face of Masate. And he may be communicating that he can't continue. Where if blood shows. pours into the eye, it can cause... Oh, shaking his head. A temporary inability to see. Referee Dekel Lorton is taking a long hard look at this. I we could be the fighter. Is not, the fighter is not getting whoa, whoa, whoa. off his stool. He is. No, now he has oh, a little bit of gamesmanship. Spill a a lot of bit though. of gamesmanship. Buying himself a little bit extra time. But still saying he can continue. I genuinely thought the fight had ended there with the yeah, fighter shaking was his head. He but th we might have seen again a little mental dent in the armor there. He's talking to his corner still. This is dangerous because you do not want to switch off in a fight like this against a... Oh, the doctor's going to check it. It's also dangerous, nor do you want to put a fighter in there who doesn't want to be in there. Without a doubt, with somebody as dangerous yes, as Yes, that's a great Bele. point, Brian Lacey. Gentlemen, I believe he's saying he can't see properly. The doctor is examining both irises. If you say you can't see, the fight is over. That's it. We're done. 
No, oh, we're still on. Doctor liked what he saw. The fight is on. Round two underway. Ender Belle in the blue corner. Masate in the red. Back and forth they went on the ground. Round number one. Masate still blanking that eye out a little bit, guys. It certainly bothered him on the ground. There was a point where he did turtle up touching it. Then he attacked. I love the way Nkose is switching stances now. Ooh. Just means he uh, opens himself up to a whole new diversity of attacks. Oh, beautiful uppercut. Just glances. Nice Doesn't job getting in that single, too. Big shots coming down now. Masate has got to find a way to survive. Enderbell has got to be careful picking his shots here. This is a grounded he, opponent. He's doing a good job just landing the uppercut. Oh, that's oh, a big knee. Right in front of us. Almost rose him off the ground. Oh, oh, and oh down. Yes, and it's, wow. over. it's over. It's wow. over. Jose, the future Enderbell gets it done. Gentlemen, has the future just become the present? Wow. That knee came all the way from South Africa. And it arrived in style. Phenomenal stuff. Round one was a chess match between the two. Round two, that is as definitive a finish as you are ever going to see. Right in front of us here in the commentary booth, he rose him off the ground with one knee. And then when he got the clinch, finished it up. Stunning stuff from the future end of Bele. Absolutely sumptuous finish. Just end the clinch. Knees right up the pipe, precision, pinpoint accuracy. Referee Deke Larkin knew it was the finish shot. Oh, wow. That one clips these connect. Look, stopped by the forearm. Oh. Boom, that found a way through. Right up to the temple, down to the ground. Lovely clinch work, inescapable clinch work from Nkosi. So strong, so powerful. Abdel Mouman Masate is now up on his feet. He's drinking water. He's, his composure is returned, but this fight is entirely over. And what a way to continue your run in the brave cage. Four and one now. Such an exciting young talent, rising star here under the brave federation. And just how chilled he is now, even after that battle. Let's make it official. Let's give him that moment. Let's raise that South African flag. Let's hand it to the Roaring Lion. All right, Brave Nation, another amazing finish. This comes to an end at 46 seconds of round two. Your winner by TKO, Nkosi, the future, and the belly. There we have it, a fantastic victory against a tough and wily opponent in Masate. And you said it, Phil Campbell, do not think it went unnoticed. Is the future the present? <laughs> Answer your own question, my friend. I think after prof two performances like we've just seen, when he fought Zaya Mishwani, now with this performance against Abdul Mumun Masate, he's making a very strong case for making himself undeniable in that respect. And look at the action here. Kirik, what impressed you most about this finish? What impressed me most about the finish was the micro increase in his ferocity. Everything he does is so ferocious, or as Mike Tyson used to put it, so ferocious. But he turned it up just a little bit at the very end, put just enough icing on that temple to put his fighter's lights out. That was the end of the fight. Absolutely incredible performance. And if ever I think there was a fighter with a perfect nick nickname, you're looking at him right here. Some fighters call themselves Pitbull, but they're, they're not. Maybe they're like a Pitbull. Somebody call themselves a killer. Hopefully they're not. They're more of a, <laughs> a knockouter. Hopefully. They're a knockouter. <laughs> but this man is the future. And there we have it. The evidence right in front of us, as it was with this finish, right in front of the commentary booth. And just watch, it rises. Phil Campbell to his feet. Me and you barely stay on our seats. For that man, that man who made that moment happen. Unreal stuff. This bout is presented by Brave Nutrition. Behind the athlete, there are hours of training. Behind every hard training is Brave Nutrition. George E is set to make his much anticipated debut in the Middle East number one promotion. And he will take on Ali Santalati who is eager to make an instant impact and ruin Eid's welcome party. Coming up next, Georges, the Lebanese bulldozer Eid, 
takes on Ali the Amazing Santalati. All right, Brave Nation, this next classic battle is three five minute rounds in a catch weight of 77 kilograms. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 11 wins and two losses. He stands 183 centimeters tall and weighs already 76.3 kilograms. Representing Finn Fighters Gym and fighting out of Finland. Please welcome the man celebrating his birthday today. Oli, the amazing Santa Lati! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of seven wins and three losses and one no contest. He stands 179 centimeters tall and weighs already 76.6 kilograms, representing TriStar Jim and fighting out of Lebanon. Give it up for George, the Lebanese bulldozer. Hey! Your referee is a bandit, Decky Larkin. So we look at the tail of the tape there. Santa Litti celebrating his birthday, still three years younger. And his opponent, George Aid, and the taller of the two is the Finnish fighter. Again, I'm going to have to check that tape measure. <laughs> he, oh, Santa Litti in the blue corner, Aid in the red. And this is rare because we're used to seeing George Aid taking the center straight away. So for him to be put on the back foot will be a rarity for him. There's such an intensity that came from Oli Santa Litti on the walkout, staring down during the announcements of each other. He is bringing a pressure and a pace that he's going to try and wilt the head under. I think eventually he's going to try and strike his way inside, establish the clinch and the takedown. That would be a wise game plan against such a, a prolific striker. Look at that overhand right, looping there. Almost as if he throws his hooks from behind himself, like whips them right in. Oh, and that's a, a oh, long that's shot. a big moment. That's a huge moment in the fight. And we have a cut as well on the entry. There's a little cut just above the left eyebrow. Mentally, how important are those moments, Kirik? They are, but what's going on right now is a very smart strategy from Oli. He knows he's not the superior striker, so he's trying to jump on him with strikes, throw him off his form. The problem with that is it doesn't last for very long. Oh, big takedown coming. Body lock, trip takedown. Oh, well fought off. Very well defended by the Lebanese bulldozer. And that cut as well, I'm gonna say it's, it's worse than it actually looks, I think. If you, uh, we get a camera look, it looks like it's quite wide open and it's swelling up that left eyebrow. I'm not quite sure what that came off. Was it a strike or a, a slight I clash of the head? I believe it was a strike. And what I've been very impressed with, and you alluded to it on the, uh, the build-up as we, as we brought the fighters in, the movement opened up those strikes from he had even under that amount of pressure. I'd love to see the camera angle. I wanna see, get a real look at this cut because you can see it's nasty on that left eyebrow pressure though coming from Santa Latte trying to clamp down heavy on that underhook oh, oh pulls guard pulls guard drops down looked like he was about to dive in for a leg thought against it didn't want to fully commit incredibly rare in mixed martial arts to see that 1993 when the sport was founded hoist Gracie of course one from guard because nobody knew what it was but everybody knows what the guard is now very very unusual to see somebody pull guard in an MMA fight. Try for the triangle, trying to stuff that leg down. Yeah. Or trying to stuff the arm between his legs. Oof. Such an active guard wants to put the ground game of George Aid to the test. Aid actually tasting blood a little bit off his face. Don't see that all the time either. <laughs> you have to get that protein in. That cut seems to be going just down the side of the face of Oli Santolati. Oh, and but again, a big shot. Oh, Ooh. the striking. Oh, and again, oh, look at huge these shots. Uppercut. There's only so many more of these Oli will be able to take. These bulldozer body shots are huge. They're going to pay a huge dividend, maybe fairly shortly. They're bringing the opponent's hands down, slowing down that footwork, cutting into the gas tank. 
that cut is swelling. Not bleeding too badly though, which is a bonus for Oli Santalati. Never stays, never stays in the one space too long, George. He's always cutting different angles. And these, these are big cages. When you look back at the, uh, the fights they've had coming up through their local scenes, the cages are much, much smaller, but the Brave cage allows that space, that movement. Allows for, for creativity of the striker. Yeah, without a doubt. And that is a takedown. That is a well-executed takedown from Oli Santalate, and he needed it. I would say his timing on that was just about perfect. And as you said, he needed it. And what he needed to do after the takedown is hold his opponent down. He has managed to do that. The third thing he needs is to start raining down effective strikes. Indeed, Carrick, indeed. And we see him now just trying to transition into the side control position. But look, making everything painful. That forearm across the throat mm. and the pressure of the shoulder as he's trying to work a space to pass the guard. Really, and he does that, slices uh, through that. That's high-level stuff. Old-school pressure pass, beautiful to see. Nice frame off elbow there, gentlemen. Let's see if he looks for that beat-down position. Looks to control that left arm, trap it in his legs. Very strong on top, Kirik. He is. The Jimmy comes from Finn Fighters Gym, is, is one I've been following for 20 years or more. They, they turn out fighters of incredible toughness and, yeah, incredible technique. And let's see, now he is looking for that beat down. He's trying to separate that arm. This has become a, a more common position in mixed martial arts now, Phil. The scope here for some elbows. Instead of just these little pot shot punches, I'd like to see him frame off and try and like wrench the elbow into the face. Even if he doesn't have enough space to land it, just grind it in. Excellent first round by both fighters. Well, you look at the tail of that round, the striking of Georgie Ed, and you can see the damage that Jess Isaacson is having to work on over there on the left eye. But the striking was phenomenal, Phil. The movement, like you said, using that Wushu Sandu background, causing damage. But then this moment, we had pulling guard, and then finally the excellent executed takedown, but which saw him ending in top position. Might have been the uppercut there that clipped the eye. I'm not quite sure, but it was a, it was a glancing blow. I don't think it's anything that's going to compromise the future of the fight, but it was a, a definitely an interesting shot landed. We are set for round number two. We've seen both their game plans laid out in front of us, Kirik. What do you want to see next? I actually think Oli can get away with trying some of his slightly wild attacks just a little bit longer. I, I don't think his opponent quite has that timing down. I would like to see him once or twice more just go flying in, throwing the kitchen sink, then try and get an underhook, take it down to the ground where he really wants it, and he clearly has an advantage. So we are set for round number two. The bandit debt larking going to bring them together as the cage door shuts here at Brave 48. George Yed in the red corner. Oli Santa Latte in the blue. And very much in a, a different phase that we saw the fight beginning. George is now taking the center. But again, straight in with the takedown is Oli. And well defended there. Oh, land a shot on the break too. I was going to praise the commitment of that drive for the takedown there, Kirik, but... The, the slippy bodies, the sweaty bodies allowed for Georgie Ed to refuse that takedown. He's called a bulldo bulldozer, not just because he can move forward. Oh. Great shot. But because of his solidity, because of his core strength, it makes him very tough to take off his feet. Oh, a nice kick to the body. Got to be careful with those kicks, though, Phil, hasn't it? That can give the opponent the limb to attach to to get that takedown. Especially when there's such a competent grappler like Oli. I think Oli's... Oh, he's working the body. He's really targeting that. The straight right has gone there twice now. Eventually, a couple more shots like that, and anyone would end up folding like a deck chair. Ole just trying to find his opening for the takedown, but oh. he's finding that takedown defensive, George, impregnable right now. And part of that th defense that he's got is the footwork, right, Kirik? And it might not be fancy footwork like the Ali shuffle is, but his judgment of range, his, his stepping in, his angling off, it's all exquisite footwork and a part of his striking. It is indeed. It's actually picture perfect. It's just a little bit hard to see. Not as easy to see as a Superman puncher. A beautiful 
double leg like that. Can he fit? If he can finish this double leg, it's huge. And he did. Wow. That's a big moment for Ole. What can he do from this position now that he has three minutes with which to work? Some fighters choose to stay inside a closed guard and ground and pound. His grappling is so good, I think he's going to try and pass the half guard. A lot of fighters just stay in top half guard and ground and pound. I think he's going to try and pass all the way to the side and finish the fight. This is exactly where he wants to be. You mentioned it, Phil, as far as a moment within this fight. There are these moments that, that happen along, these incremental moments during a battle with another human being. Mm. And they affect you mentally as well as physically. And that was an excellent, a big takedown with a lot of time to play with for I Ollie. think what you're referring to, Brian, would be the microaggressions within a fight, my <laughs> friend. <laughs> I needed at least one tonight. <laughs> I needed at least one. <laughs> And again, working from inside the guard. Two minutes, 20 seconds in the second round for Oli to try and progress this position. Back when he was standing, Oli Santolati was actually thinking about going for a straight ankle lock. Again, he fights a little bit different and it's working for him. Pressure covering the mouth just makes it ugly on bottom for you. It's one of those nightmare positions and a nightmare opponent where you'll just dream about him for... I say dream, have nightmares about him <laughs> for, uh, for many days after feeling this sort of pressure. Oli just trying to come up into combat base to try and pass. But we're seeing a very close guard, a very flat back. There's nothing, he's not even controlling the posture really of, of Oli. It's now very low down the back of Oli as well. Oh, and Oli just dropping that elbow in. There's about half a dozen basic strategies from the closed guard. Aid is using one of them. He's basically trying to survive. He's trying to hold on. He could be trying to get to the back. He could be sweeping. He could be striking. He'll be trying to stand up. But what he's choosing to do is hold his opponent close and minimize the damage. He's doing that successfully. He does have experience as well, Oli, uh, George. Sorry. This will be his 11th professional MMA fight. So he has been under pressure before, but... He's much more used to the striking, and that sort of efficiency, that gas tank, that engine, mm -hmm. is a very different one that you use when you're under the, uh, the attacks from bottom, when you're feeling somebody's pressure. It really does wear on you in a very different way. Yeah, well, the difference would be when you're the one striking, you're essentially regulating your own output. You're essentially the one regulating your own gas tank. When you have to physically fight against another human being who's imposing themselves upon you from a top position, you don't really have control of how much energy you expend. Therefore, you will gas quicker. And this could be an excellent tactic on the part of Oli Santalate Kirik, just not making this a fight ending moment, but just making it one which may open it up by just grinding and taking away that cardio, that enthusiasm of fight from uh, Georgie Ed. It is. This is what you call the grind. It is, in my opinion, the highest form of mixed martial arts. It's the one where there's least likely for something crazy, something unexpected to happen. He is grinding his opponent down into the mat, and he's doing it successfully. Round two in the books. And the story of that round, Phil, was the takedown. And for me, it's the way he commits to that charge for the takedown. You sometimes see people tentative with strikes, especially when they've taken damage going in like the uppercut, like shots like that. Yeah. But he fully commits. Well, fully commit. That's why he got the takedown, because he fully committed to it. And not only did those three minutes of top control give him a little bit of a reprieve, it also, as we said earlier, potentially has zapped the cardio down a little bit of George. So going into the third round, you have to feel that Oli Santolati has a little bit of the ascendancy. Yeah, it felt like it's certainly in that second round. And Kirik, I'm popping you in the corner there of uh, Ied. What are you saying to your fighter? What do you do now to, uh, to switch this round tactically and mentally? The out outcome of what I would tell him is... Each of you likely has one round. Whoever wins the last round is going to be the winner. If you keep it standing, it's you. If you let him take it down, it's your opponent. You can't come straight in over and over again naked. You can't come in without a lot of setups. You need to get on that bicycle, move herky-jerky, circle left, circle right. Choose your moments or you're going to get put in your back and the fight won't go your way. Well, I am hoping for a lot of herky-jerky tonight in this final round. Oh, I love me some herky-jerky <laughs> striking in a fight. I cannot wait five minutes for this to be decided. Such a battle between these two. Ied in the red corner, Santa Latte in the blue. How long are you giving it before that first takedown attempt, Phil? I'm going to say before the, four, before the minute is over, I think there's going to be a, a takedown attempt. That's a huge leg kick just right into the meat of the thigh. 
And I think he heard you, Kirik. He is certainly moving as far as he had. He's on his bike, circling lots of lateral movement, never being a stationary target, and most importantly, never letting the cage have his back. He's listened to his, he's got an incredible corner, and he listened to him. Not every fighter is smart enough to. Let's see if this whole round goes his way. If he can keep it standing, it should. If he can't, it likely doesn't. This is where tactics in MMA come in. It's not just who's the better fighter. It's how you each employ what you've got. Oli Santalai, he's just weighing up his options right now. I think he's going to try and counter the strikes of George Ed with the takedown. But well, one thing he's got by the fact of that second round is you saw it. Oh, you saw it in the uh, first and second round, and he did it there. Huge. Oh, oh, I was going to say, George Ed. He's almost up a big cut underneath the eye. Oh. I was going to say he wasn't sitting down on his strikes as much, but then he did that. That is a, that is a big Very smart. Cut. Backed out. Woo! Oh, bringing the doctor in to take a look at the cut, I think. That is instantly opening him up under the right eye there. And I was about to say, because Giorgio was on the back foot, he was moving. Not so, so the strikes didn't have as much pop as soon as he planted those feet, as soon as he picked a target, unleashed the combination with feet planted. That's the damage. And just look at it filling up. Look how quickly that is filling up under his right eye. Oh, that's pinpoint accuracy with striking, isn't it? Again, world-class medical staff here. If the doctor allows the fight to continue, it is safe for the fighter to continue. And we are set. What a way to celebrate your birthday, <laughs> Ali Santalate. Well, it's not different to how we celebrate birthdays back home. It's like <laughs> just, uh, Except just you get paid for it. No, it doesn't happen in the confines oh. of the cage. And we have now seen Georgie Ed, but what he's got to be careful of this. Standing still now, being that stationary target or planting those feet might give the opportunity to Santalete for this moment. Oh, and he fired for that takedown, didn't he? Again, at not at a similar time to he achieve the takedown in the second round. But he was so lit up by the damage he had caused with those strikes that he wanted to cause more damage. And that almost, well, that did give up this position, Kirik. It did. Aid in the second round was basically just holding on, limiting damage. I think he's going to try and be aggressive from bottom now. I expect to see some strikes from bottom. Eventually get a foot in that hip, drive the opponent off, pop back up to standing where he desperately wants to be right now. But Oli Santalate did exactly what he needed to do. Dug deep, show that spirit that he is known for, that Finnish spirit. A little bit of a can opener there. That may just be to try and open the guard, try and step over, but he seems comfortable to sit inside the guard and land his strikes. But when you consider now in the third round that he's been cut open, forcing the doctor to come in and have a look, yep. at the three minute mark he gets his takedown. Do the three minutes of groundwork negate the fact that he's been popped open by Ed? This is where the judges earn their money. Mm. And there's no solid answer to that. It comes down to a judgment call if you don't finish the fight. That's what happens. All your work, half your pay, goes into the hands of someone else. That's terrifying when you put it like that, Kerry. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a sport oh. for the faint of heart. Now these men laying it all on the line here. Painting this canvas with the blood of George Santalate. Whoever takes the victory here, this is a, a spectacular bout between these two. Oh, he's, he might have reversed him. Look at that making. Oh, the urgency was there, but he just needed to get back to his feet, throwing those wild limbs back up. But back into the guard, Santa Latte. Another one of those moments you talked about, Phil. Yeah, it really is a moment like that where you... George just took a big deep breath there, which again tells me just how pivotal that moment was. He wasn't able to get back to his feet. He was smothered by Oli. But again, Oli needs to really start being a lot more active and a lot more definitive in this kind of situation. Oh, and again, dropping him down. Clock ticking, 49 seconds left. Oh, he's doing a good job at doing enough so the referee can't stand him up. I'm not certain he's doing enough to win this. The referee is going to stand him up, though. We're going to see the last 35 seconds of this on the feet. Expect something big from Georgie Ed. Expect a takedown attempt from Santa Lati. Oh, wearing the marks of this fight on his face is the birthday boy, the amazing Oli Santa Lati. 
That's a nice kick from Ole. Was it just south of the border? George comes over the top with a shot of his own, and he's been working that body beautifully throughout the fight, hasn't he? When he has been on his feet, that is one of the targets he's certainly made good use of. Oh, and now pushing the pace and the pressure. Great fight between the two. Gentlemen, there's an old saying in boxing. You can, re you can cut judging all the way down to a simple question. Who hurt who more? By that standard, I do like Georgie Ed here, but I'm not sure how the judges are going to call this one. I think this is such a tight one to call. I think they both had their moments. Control, dominance of position, as well as, as you said, damage, which is being yeah. worn on the face there of uh, Santalate. The face of Oli Santalate really telling the story of the fight. But again, it's a matter of interpretation. Do you give dominance to, or do you give credence to the near 10 minutes of, of ground control we've seen exhibited by Oli Santalate, or do you give credence and, and favor to the, the damage done by George Ed? We shall wait and see how our judges here at cage side saw that one. What I do know is that our fans of Brave Nation just witnessed yet another bloody, spectacular, fantastic, amazing fight here at Brave 48. The canvas tells the tale. <laughs> there is so <laughs> much blood and heart and spirit left inside that cage. For those of you in Brave Nation wondering what this little delay is about, there's a card runner, score runner. The score runner is collecting from two of the judges the scores, taking them to the head judge. The head judge is then going to look at it, make sure everybody, every I is dotted, every T is crossed, puts it together, hands it off to Carlos Kramer. Carlos will then enter the ring. But it's absolutely crucial that that math gets done correctly. And in the tumult of a fight, it's, it's not as easy as it sounds. So bear with us for just a few seconds longer. I know Carlos Kramer is going to be entering the Brave Combat Federation cage very soon. And we see that those cuts, that damage. Great work from our cut lady, our cut person, Jess Isaacson. One of the best in the business. Just don't start her talking. <laughs> <laughs> Loves a chit chat, so she does. You know it's a good fight when there is blood splattered on the camera <laughs> as well. I thought there was a little bit out of focus, and I realized no, there is claret blocking our view, but we are almost set, we are ready. One man has the score, one man knows the outcome. That man is the roaring lion, Mr. Carlos Kramer. All right, Brave Nation, what an incredible war that was. Both of these gentlemen put it all on the line. We go to the judge's scorecard. Your first judge scores about 29, 28 A Eid. Your next judge scores about 29, 28 Santa Lati. And your third judge scores about 29, 28 for your winner by split decision. Only the amazing Santa Lati. And there we have it, Ole Santalati on his birthday. What a way to turn 27. But again, I, there was the questions we were asking, gentlemen. Did it come down to the striking or did it come down to the ground dominance? George Aid not uh, a little bit perplexed by the decision. Ole Santalati elated. What a birthday present for the <laughs> young man. And he gave us the present with that performance, staying in that fight, the tenacity with those takedowns that saw him over the edge, not even mentally breaking when the doctor comes in to check your cuts, staying focused, staying in the game, and this is the fight. Talk us through it, Phil. Yeah, just again, my striking versus your wrestling and my jiu-jitsu. It was absolutely fantastic, and I've seldom seen guard pull in high-level mixed martial arts, but. When George did have that scope to get his shots off, he looked at, he looked like he was in that flow state. But you have to give credit to Ole for just how tenacious he was with the takedowns. And he wanted it so badly that he got it. He, he made it into being. Tenacious was certainly a feature of that fight. Both doing a fantastic showing. Styles makes fights, two different styles, and they gave us a great fight, Kirik. Until not too long ago, Finn Fighters Jim was competing at Finn Fight, 
not unsurprisingly, and it was the last mixed martial arts organization in Europe to go bare knuckle. These are guys so tough, they train for bare knuckle mixed martial arts, put some gloves on, and they're perfectly happy to bang away like this all night long. And there we see more of the action, the takedowns there from Oli. What a lovely entry, turning of the corner. And here's some of these slams, Kirik. One after the other, fantastic action. But that man, the birthday boy. Brave. All right, Brave Nation, this next battle is three. Five minute rounds in a super lightweight co-main event of the evening for Brave 48 Arabian Night. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 13 wins and three losses. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 74.9 kilograms. Representing Family Fight Team and fighting out of Serbia. Please welcome Nemanja Sledgehammer Kovac. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of nine wins and four losses. He stands 177 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 75.1 kilograms. Representing American top team Zagreb and fighting out of Lebanon. Please welcome Ahmed the Shadow Laban. For referee instructions, the bandit, Decky Larkin. Thanks to S Sabarco Car Group, our gold sponsor. Nemanja Kovac with a slight height advantage. 26 years of age as well, taking on Ahmad, the shadow Laban. I am buzzing for this fight, <laughs> gentlemen. <laughs> Kovac in the blue corner, Laban in the red. I don't see many a backward step being taken in this fight. The better movement, yes, will be implemented by Ahmed Laban, but the forward motion, the bite down on your gum shield and throw hands type of fighter is Nemanja Kovac. And between them, they have put 18 humans to sleep. Look at the stalking style of Kovac, the complete opposite of the movement, the footwork, the athleticism of Laban. But I think the key to this fight, oh will oh, be accuracy. Who can connect? Oh, oh big shot. Huge uppercut. Uppercut turned it around. There was some pressure coming from the clinch. It looked like Kovac was in trouble, but you saw the power but lifted literally. him off the feet with a dirty uppercut coming up the middle. A smile from the band on the bottom, probably wondering how he got there. That was a big old dirty cartoon wallop <laughs> of an uppercut. And this is what makes Kovac such an exciting prospect fighter because he is just so tough. He can take such an amount of damage but if he touches you once that is it that little exchange perfectly illustrates how perfect this fight is it can turn around literally in a split second these used to be illegal these heel strikes you're seeing they are now legal under the unified rules of mixed martial arts they don't tend to end fights but they certainly can rack things up a little bit on the judges' scorecards, and those heels to the hips do hurt. Now, listen, I know there is some action going on, but I, for one, would like them to stand it up. That, on the, as far as the first exchanges, would just... Do you reckon if we make enough noise about it, Dick, you'll stand them up? I think so. I think so. <laughs> Almost 1 minute 50 seconds into this fight. 3 minutes 10 of the first round. Miro doing a good job of squaring off the hips anytime he feels Laban try and open them up a little bit. Still using those little heel strikes to the kidneys. Kovac digging to the midsection, body, body, head. Nemanja purposefully keeping his opponent off of that fence because the fence does aid in a stand-up. Miro Djurkovic in the corner of Nemanja Kovac being very much the, uh, the more pronounced corner man. And asked answered. Decky Larkin stands the fighters up. <laughs> Crowd goes wild. <laughs> oh, and straightaway Laban moves back in. Oh, oh that's winging a good shots. shot. But again, as we've seen, Kovac only needs one shot. 
Oh, Laban stepping in with the uppercut this time, looking to pay back. That closed, stalking, almost Tyson-esque, walking forward guard of Kovac. More than happy to take a punch there that to land oh, his own. Those oh, leg kicks as look well. Look at the swelling already on the outside leg of Kovac. Ahmed switching up the angles of attack now, going low, going straight in, and then looping him like that right hand, followed up by the three that you just oh, saw, just and down the middle. That knee connected on the beard of Kovac. But you wouldn't know. That's just the type of fighter <laughs> Kovac is. He has given absolutely nothing away. If Kovac wants to injure your knee, sticks that chin out there and invites it to come in. <laughs> Nice straight jab there. Oh, replied. Look nice at one, two. Just solid boxing from Kovac. Yeah, it's nothing spectacular in the way that Laban can, can throw sort of flashier strikes, but it is so, so powerful. And again, leaping forward. He's got to set them up now. Oh, shin to oh. shin. That is nasty. <laughs> I'm surprised no one got opened up with that. Laban a little bit more ginger on that front foot. At the minute, they're both having a bit of a macho contest as far as strike for strike, but those leg kicks are certainly paying at all. Just look at the welts, as you said, Phil. Oh, oh one nice, back. Nice inside leg kick. Again, that front leg may be a little bit compromised of Laban. Action-packed, Kirik. It is indeed, and what's impressing me the very most about Laban is he started off being a little bit predictable, and now I have no idea what he's going to do next. His opponent doesn't. I don't believe he even knows what he's going to throw next. It's just going to be coming from some different angle at some different height. Oh, peppering the jab. Ooh. Definitely the oh, head kick thrown. It's definitely the, the accumulation of strikes that is mounting up for Laban, but again... Nemanja Kovac does have that X factor of that one big shot. Oof, what a first round between these two. Deep breaths from Laban as he goes back. Kovac, though, was under pressure. It looked like he was hurt, and it was while in that clinch. I mean, we might see it here. Talk us through it, Phil. And if we see just the pressure being put on relentlessly by Laban, then all of a sudden, here it comes. Wallop! <laughs> right <laughs> off his feet. I think there is no better sound effect. Let's see it from this angle. Oh, oh. on the chin, on the point of the chin. Literally needed 1966 Batman style. <laughs> Pow! <laughs> Action packed first round between these two. We expected nothing less. It really has been a fight we've been anticipating that is living up to the billing. Kirik. What are you saying to Laban right now? What I'm seeing right now is a fighter is not executing complete confidence. He was shaking his head as he walked back. There's something he's doing that he's not liking. I would rinse my fighter's mouthpiece off, let him take a sip of water, and I'd listen to him and try and deal with it. He's, this is not a fighter who's completely happy with himself, but I got to say, I am. I am completely happy with both of these fighters in this fight. And we set for round number two. Kovac in the blue corner. Laban in the red, me, Brian Lacey, alongside Phil Campbell and Kirik Jenis calling the action here at Brave 48 Arabian Night. This oh. is our co-main event, and the leg kicks are just, I'm going to say horrible, Phil. Setting them up nicely with the jab. He landed three or four real tight, stiff jabs and then followed up with a real whipping in leg kick. And it's hard to call it a tangible weapon, but the, the demeanor, the intensity that Kovac brings just by being able to take your best shots, Kirik. It's a strange thing, but you see fighters, I was in his last fight against Ivan Vladimir, we saw him wilt under the fact that whatever he threw, Kovac can just eat. I suspect Laban may have injured his foot on a, on a knee or possibly on the upper part of that shin. I think it was the shin on shin connection in the yeah, first I, round, I was going to say the back foot, the right foot, there's some bruising on the top of that. You can see it on the bridge. So oh, yeah, the summing up his footwork is not... Is trust yeah you can see that you can see the swelling on that right foot something's not right with his foot and he's paying a very heavy price for it right now whoa oh, he's opened him up though there's a cut there's a big cut oh and he's swarming him completely swarming him now oh strike after strike coming in a big knee 
There's a big cut down there. You can see it across that right eye. <laughs> and what does Kovac do? Put the hands up and march forward. Uh, Serbian chins are made of something very different, gentlemen, aren't they? Absolutely. Just nice shots in the clinch. Oh, and takes him down. That was one of the most disdainful takedowns I've seen in my life. That was get away from me now so I can punch you in the face. And now you might see that right leg when the foot is there. You see the swelling oh, on the yes. top of the foot there? Oh, oh beautiful. Beautiful. Fantastic. What terrific technique. Wall walk into a reversal. Back to standing. Limp leg out. And the red mask of Kovac is nodding, inching its way forward. That is a big cut. Uh, we could be talking about a broken foot here, guys. I think we... I think whatever you hit Kovac with breaks. <laughs> <laughs> Becky Larkin taking a good look at that cut now. Phil, I do believe oh. that that foot is broken. Mm. Yeah, that's swelling, rising. It's just compromising his movement. And movement is one that's key, if not game, the yeah. key part of his game. Yeah, Brian. He's got a widespread game, though. The shadow has a, a deep, deep arsenal he can call on here. Oh, a knee to the body now. Kovac pressuring. Or oh, is he going to drop for this? Oh, does have two wins by submission in his professional career. Let's that go. Two minutes, five seconds left in this second round. Oh, short shots. That's why some people don't favor the single leg. It takes two hands on that one leg. Woo! Leaves two hands for your opponent to pop you in the face. That's what we saw right there. Oh, a nice stiff jab from Kovac there. Pushes back the head of there Laban. There was almost Laban taking a step back there as if to say, what else do I have to do to Nemanja Kovac? Yeah. More knees coming up the middle. Oh, he's looking in a Kovac is fading. This is it, the pressure, knee after knee. Oh, that oh, one's that clean, was clean through. Man. Somehow he's still standing. Kovac is the definition of a fighter's fighter. What is in the water at family fight team Novi Sad Serbia? If you could bottle that, sell it, you would be a millionaire. Kovac's hands are low. This is not the same fighter we saw three minutes ago. He's got to get himself together and get those hands a little higher or his head's going to be turned into a speedball. There we go. He pulled them up. Now they're down again, and they're up. Laban's now crossing his feet now, which tells me that his rear foot is compromised. As opposed to moving laterally, he's crossing his feet. Yeah, look at that very different look from both fighters. Understandably so. They both put each other through the mire. Gentlemen, this is a heroic performance we're honored to see here. I said in the intro I was excited for Brave Nation to witness this. This is a matchup. I couldn't see it going any other way, but back and forth, bloody war between these two. These two men are taking the full measure of each other in front of our eyes. Oh, Steph jab again, but... Oh, oh. oh Kovac with the takedown attempt. 10 seconds left and our cuts. People will have some work to do again. More knees coming through, pressure. A little look up at the clock there for uh, Laban. Woof. Wow. Now, what's going to be interesting now is Laban's going to be off that foot for a full minute. Yeah. So that's going to leave it time to swell further. When he puts the pressure back on that foot, it's going to be further compromised. Well, let's talk about some of the action here. This is the clean face of it Kovac. Is, but it is literally just strike for strike for strike. Like, that's, that's a clean head. Can that shin on dome? And the knees, if we get a look at the combination of knees, there's a multitude which connects cleanly. There we go. That's not the cut of the set that I was looking at. But the output, the pressure. Oh, the endurance of these two, Kirik, is unreal. Gentlemen, this is a, this is a very rare fight. I feel privileged beyond description to be standing here and sitting here, standing here, up, down, up, down, and watching this live. You don't see fights like this very often. Brave Nation, appreciate it. And great job there by Jess Isaacson, stopping the bleeding there, and a huge gash over the, the right eye there of Kovac. Lads, I say throw technique out the window, just <laughs> me in the middle. 
foots together and just. <laughs> and you're right, the footwork compromise indeed. What does that do to the power shots of uh, Laban, not just the movement? It means he's not able to sit down on his foot, or uh, sit down on his shots, and he's not able to bring his shots from those awkward angles because his movement is compromised. The other thing you can see as well is when he throws those, and he is throwing winging shots, it leaves him out of, off balance, mm -hmm. and that means you're Which not is controlling your upper body movement. You could be open to one of those big shots from Kovac. And being off balance is not indicative of the game of Ahmed Laban, yep. which tells us how further compromised he is. The reason he's throwing those wide shots is because when you can no longer put your hips behind a shot properly, you have to substitute distance for hips. But when you do that, your opponent can see him coming and can't take advantage. And you can hear the corner of Laban. They want movement. They want him on his bike. They don't want this. Oh, straight oh. kick. Front kick straight to the chops there of Kovac. Still, he is standing. Very few people in MMA take a shot like Nemanja Kovac. Thank God. <laughs> and it is, durability is not something you want to lean on, but it certainly is a huge asset. Yeah, we're, 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 talking, we're talking about it like it's the only thing he has. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, that's a discredit to Nemanja 100%. Kovac. He's a fantastic striker who lands heavy, heavy yeah. shots. It just so happens he has a granite chin as well. Ooh, oh, that's right. a big shot. Looking to chase down Laban. Laban circling out once more. I think he potentially smells a little bit of blood in the water. Three minutes, 15 seconds. It's nice to see Laban. The hands are a little bit lower, but he's moving his head laterally just a little. He's protecting himself as he's able right now. Oh, and again, that teep coming through. Let's see if he sends that upstairs again. Big deep breath from the Manja Kovac. Oh, oh, dig to the... That hurt him. That liver shot hurt him. Yeah. Oh, oh, and then a head kick. We've talked about how good he can take a shot to the chin. The liver is something... You have no control over. No control over. And that was a beautifully picked weapon. And I wonder if... Uh, Laban knows just how badly he hurt Kovac there. You saw the elbow come down instantly after it connected. You see just how laboured the movement has become, just how impeded the movement of Ahmed Laban has become. And Kirik, in the midst of this battle, this war for Laban still to be picking that range of shots, it shows how high his fight IQ is as well. It does, but what we're watching here is superhuman heart. To see a man move like that, to set down on shots with what's clearly to my eye a broke, I'm not an ankle uh, doctor, but that's a broken ankle. To see him, to see him do that, it, it leaves me truly in awe. And I am in awe of Kovac's forward movement, of his integrity, of his tenacity. Oh, Leg gave out. Still... Oh, he's really butt, starting yes. to feel that foot, isn't he? You see the top of the foot, the swelling is growing and growing. He hasn't thrown it for a while either. If you get into the clinch, maybe a cheeky little foot stomp could be something you could yeah, have Absolutely, a against the cage, if he can keep him there. The problem is the shadow is living up to his name. It's very hard to pin down get, and get his back against that cage. One minute, 20 seconds. Can we extend the clock any? Can we do that? This is the such a battle. The corner of Laban are asking for movement. It's a little bit easier said than done when you're in the crux of a broken foot. Without a doubt. Kovac's corners won his hands out, but it's a little bit easier said than done when you haven't fought your heart out like this for almost three full rounds. St oh, Huge ooh. shot. Still standing is Serbia's Sledgehammer Kovac. I am questioning all I know about human anatomy right here, right now, beside this battle at the Brave Cage. 35 seconds left. Oh, that foot is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But he's still pumping out the jab. He's still connecting. He is the one with the cleaner work, despite the issue with his foot. The corner's telling Laban to move, despite the broken foot, because if he stops moving, he could get knocked out. And it's still sound advice. Woo! <laughs> 
And I think he didn't realize how badly he had his opponent hurt to the body there. We'd have liked to see him work more, but now we are going to see it finishing in the center of the cage. Oh, he had some other leg. Head kick. Finishing strong as the shadow. Wow. What a what fight. an honor to watch that fight. Yeah, absolutely. That deserves a standing round of applause. Everybody Genuinely here has witnessed fight. something special tonight here in our co-main event. Huge thanks to Sheikh Khalid and for Muhammad, to Muhammad Shahid for the honor of getting to call that fight. Oh, where do you even begin with the replays, gentlemen? Oh, that, that, this might be the easiest night's work for the replay guy in the truck because there's so much to pick from. Choose any five seconds at random. Yeah, just put it up oh. there on the social network, and you'll get a you'll get a highlight reel that everybody wants see, to see. See that beautiful body shot you were talking about, Brian Lacey, and it did cause damage. And I don't think he understood quite how badly he was. Uh, he took so many shots to the head, but the, the only time that poker face dropped was that shot to the liver. But my goodness, the adrenaline pumping through my body right now after witnessing, like you, you called it, superhuman strength. And gentlemen, there's so many times in mixed martial arts when on paper a fight looks perfect and it's not. And on paper the fight looks eh and it's incredible. This one was perfect on paper and perfect in execution. So many moments to pick from. And again, let's look. Kovac surviving those heavy shots, a huge cut over his right eye. The foot, the compromised foot early on through the, uh, I still, but I think it was when he, that they, they clashed legs throwing kicks at each other but he fought for another two and a half rounds with that stunning stunning stuff my sole regret here is that i cannot declare both these men winners because in my heart in my soul we are looking at two winners awesome. all right brave nation what an incredible co-main event at brave cf 48 arabian night after three rounds we go to the judges scorecards all three judges score the bout 30 27 for your winner by unanimous decision from lebanon ahmed the shadow laban the shadow ahmed laban takes the victory in a fight which will go down in brave history unbelievable stuff from both athletes <laughs> and we don't just have somebody who's got skill, technique, somebody who can go into the heart of the wall. You have a real personality on our hands now in this brave, super lightweight uh, division. Potential superstar in the making, as you say, he marries what he does in the cage with who he is outside of it. And that's a recipe for superstardom. And we often talk about what you can train. He's got so many skills, Kirik, but the stuff you can't train is that heart, is that tenacity, is the will that will not be broken when facing somebody like Kovac. And Laban, again, showed us that tonight alongside all the other traits he has. And Brian, might I add love? This is clearly a man who loves to fight. He's innovative. He's exciting. He's tough beyond my ability to describe. And he's doing exactly what he loves right here in front of us. And let's also take that moment to uh, give huge props to Nemanja Kovac. What a spirit he has, what a chin he has got, and what a dangerous opponent he is for any of the light, super lightweights. He, there's no putting this man out of there. If he can take all of that, I do not know. It would take a sledgehammer, I think, to put him down. Not by me. I had a sledgehammer against him. I'd use my feet and run <laughs> straight away. Here we see some of that work. These knees, those connections, the front kick. Oh, the combinations. And this Kirik is with a broken foot as well. Pushing forward. Such a stunning set of combinations. The liver shot there. Shutting his body down, but still he survives. Wow. Like you said, every five seconds of that fight would be a highlight reel. Pushing forward. Croatia's Laban. All right, Brave Nation, this is the main event of the evening on one of the greatest fight cards we've ever witnessed. Let's welcome our first warrior into the Brave CF 48 Arena. Time 
time for the main event of the evening and the war we've all been waiting for. Coming from the historic Arad Fort in Combat Kingdom in the magnificent Kingdom of Bahrain. Two warriors are ready to collide inside the Brave CF Arena. Brave Nation, don't blink for this one. This will be absolute fire in our main event of the evening. Three five minute rounds in the lightweight division. Your judges for this bout are Hadi Muhammad Ali, Mateus Hujan, Ramsey Farhad. Your referee in charge of the action is the bandit Decky Larkin. This lightweight main event for Brave CF48 is sponsored by the Bahrain MMA Federation and its president, Mohamed Kamber, and presented by our gold sponsors, Sibarco Car, and our hospitality partners, Nordic Palace and Spa. Two men enter, only one leaves with his arms raised in victory. Who comes out on top in this amazing main event? It's time to find out. Let's introduce our two main event warriors. But before we begin, Brave Nation, I have one question for you and one question only. To all those watching in the magnificent kingdom of Bahrain and the millions watching around the world, Brave Nation, are you ready for war? Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of nine wins and five losses. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs already 70.6 kilograms. Representing Ahmad Fight Club and fighting out of Grozny, Russia. Please welcome Abdul Rachman. Makaziev! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 17 wins and six losses. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs already 70.6 kilograms. Representing boxing squad and fighting out of France by way of Algeria. Please welcome Elias Broly Joan. For referee instructions, it's the bandit, Decky Larkin. Gentlemen, you understand what the rules you're fighting under? Obey my commands at all times. Listen to my instructions all the time. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. Let's go. Let's do it. Bandit Decky Larkin. I can categorically tell you neither one of those men understood a word Decky said. <laughs> we are set for this main event. Elias Jerome in the blue in the red corner taking on Abdul Rahman Mahajiev in the blue. Me, Brian Lacey, alongside Phil Campbell and Kirik Jenes calling the action here at Brave 48. And there is a palpable tension right now to see how this fight unfolds. Really will be telling to see the game plan of Giroud. Will he, as you alluded to, Phil, who to take this past that first round? Because we know what the inevitable game plan of Makajiev is, is to try and get the fight done in the first round. If he can't do that, what adaptations can he make to his game? Absolutely, we're going to have to see him dig deep. But what he uses, because he's not scared of the ground, he will throw kicks, he will throw big winging shots. And as he proved in his outing at Brave 32, even if you put him on his back, he can submit you from that position as well. Interestingly, though, wearing a knee brace on his right knee, I believe it is. Left knee. Left knee. Can't tell my left from my right, 32 <laughs> years old. We'll have you using a knife and fork properly by the end of this as well. <laughs> That's big talk. <laughs> oh, oh, huge shot to the body from Makajiev. Big stuff. And what are you seeing early, Kirik? This is very tentative, respectful opening from both these fighters. I'm seeing intelligent fighting. 
Stepping straight in there and starting to exchange is not intelligent fighting. You don't know what your opponent's like no matter how much, even if you trained with them, no matter how much tape you watch. You need to find out for yourself what your opponent's reaction time is, what his reach is, what his strength feels like, and you have to do that as safely as possible. That's what we're watching right here. It's not just a tit for tat. We're watching information being downloaded on both sides. Sometime in the next minute or so, they're going to have the information they need and they're going to turn the wick up. Nice body kick once again. And we're looking at Southpaw versus Orthodox. Those rear kicks to the body for both sides really open in these positions, Phil. Oh, that was a nice shot landed by Jerun just as Makajiev was coming in. But yes, as you say, it opens up a new myriad of strikes, a new myriad of possibilities for the fighters with an Orthodox going against the Southpaw. I would like to see Jerun try and open up with the body kick a little bit more. Try and really dig that into the liver. But in saying that, then you're vulnerable to the takedown. Certainly. Oh, and if you look at the underneath of the left elbow there of Jeroen, he is wearing oh, yeah, that uh, marks from the, the body shots from Makhajiev. Very tense. This is the, the calmest start I've seen from Abdul Rahman. Oh, oh knockout! Jeroen looking to finish the fight. Rahman trying to survive. I'll be honest, I thought that was a head kick knockout, gentlemen. Just by the way, Makhajiev hit the grind. Well, we are going to see he's calling him in, but no. Oh, We're going to see if it... He got up very tentatively Makazi there, didn't he? letting his head clear. Oh, ducking down. Looking for the finish here. Oh. Looking for the guillotine. This would be the seventh... or sorry, the eighth guillotine of the man's career if he were to get it. Makhajiev has a foot. He's oh, going to try and clear that. the Look knee. That. Oh. that is great technique. Got to stop the leg entanglement. Pass to the far side. Now he's in top side control. That might have been the biggest mistake that Jurund has made. Oh, look at the angle on the net. There is... It's just the technique for escaping. And you think about that still dusting those cobwebs off from getting dropped by that head kick, Phil. That was an absolute huge head kick. And you have to give credit to the recuperative powers of Makhajiev because I thought he was gone. I yeah. genuinely thought he was out. The way he fell, and credit to Deki Larkin as well, understanding the fight was still in it. Phil, he may well have been out and then came to as he hit the ground. It happens rarely, but this has been a night of firsts for me. I've seen some incredible action, some of which I've never seen before. I do believe the fighter was out, hit the ground, woke up, and now appears to be in control. Oh, in like top, in it, this is his bread and butter, Phil, sorry. No, not, not at all. I was just saying I'd like to see Jerun try and work his way back to the feet as that's where he had the most success. And this is exactly where Mikhajiev wants to be. And he has one minute, two seconds to work. His ground game, good guard work as well though from Jeroen. He might drop for this, he doesn't, yet. Yeah. Turning around, oh, look at this, looking to try and get this. This would be unreal if we see a toehold finish here from uh, Makhajiev. Brave his. Nation, Makhajiev needs to secure that grip on his left wrist with his right one. He's pinning. The limb, and he has lost it for now. He's transitioning, to the almost there. This is the get, wow, can he get this? Trying to triangle the Might feet to keep himself safe. Might switch. Could switch to a straight knee yeah. bar, decides not to, and now Jerome oh. ends up on top. Oh, if you are a jiu-jitsu purist, that was absolutely <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> And now on top, Jerome, as we come to the end of the first round. Now the questions begin, Phil. Now, Kirik, we ask, can Makajiev take his first victory outside the first round? This for Jerome will be a little landmark for him going back to his corner. I was at the weigh-ins. He did have a very, very hard weigh-in. Some fighters can bounce back from that quicker than others. We're going to find out in the next five minutes whether that's the case here. And we see the body kick there from Makajiev. We hopefully see that head kick as well. Talk us through this, Phil. That was absolutely beautiful. Rear leg, as we alluded to, coming from that southpaw stance, it comes up at an unconventional angle. Boom! And the way that Makaziev hit the ground, I thought he was gone. Yeah, and this is where instinct kicks in, Kiri. This is where him being a grappler since he was two, three, four years old, that's where it came into play. It does. I think strategically there was a little bit of a, a mistake on Broly's part there. I don't think where he wants to engage him is on the ground. But then the fact he was also able to hang on the ground with Makajiev is also another feather in his cap. So Without he's bound to be brimming with confidence going into the second round. Second round is upon us at the main event here at the Arabian Night. Brave 48. Whew. Makajiev in the blue corner. Giron. Giron, sorry, in the red. They touch gloves. We are underway once again. 
such tension in this room. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You can feel, I say room, we're, we're outside. outside. <laughs> this, is, this is such tension on the planet. This is... Uh, That's where our heads are at right now. We can't even make a distinction between the setting in which we are in. It's almost like Jeroen sizing him up for another big kick, either upstairs or downstairs. Well, that, as we said, the body kick is open from that stance for both of them, but so is the head kick. You see how, if, what Jeroen did there, if that's what he can do, if he can land a couple of strikes, get out again, and again, almost like a Diaz style accumulation of punches, and that it will in turn fatigue Makajiev. Yeah, fatigue, fatigue has certainly been a telling trait in the Makajiev. Makajiev, of course, known as a grappling specialist, but he's show, showing some sl slick strikes to us as well. Yeah, coming from the Akhmat Fight Club, they've got so many bodies down there that they can train with and learn from, and the facilities are, are phenomenal. Brian, there's only three things you can count on in life, death, taxes, and Akhmat fighters bringing it. <laughs> Jeroen stepping in with that check hook. Oh, there he is, starting to attack that leg with the knee brace on it, which is on his left knee. <laughs> stepping forward is Jeroen. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him go inside, outside, and try and compromise that knee a little bit. Oh, attempted counter strike there over the top, coming from Makhachev. And he's taking some breaths. Look for him to blitz forward, try and create an opportunity for that clinch, for that takedown. But saying that when you're against a pinpoint striker like Giroud is uh, easier said than done. Did get a shot off over the top there. In the corner of Makhachev is uh, Daou Shahayev. Shahayev, one of, uh, one of his training partners, hit him and his four brothers, three other brothers I should say, including a pair of twins, are fantastic fighters. Tentative stuff here. Happy to pick his shot, Jeroen, Phil. Yeah, as I say, it seems to be that accumulation that he's looking for right now to, to really drag that fight into the deeper waters. He's had a little bit of taste of the ground game. He's thought, that's not particularly where I want to spend all my time. Yes, I acquitted myself well, but what if I can drag this fight potentially into even a third round? Absolutely. And for me, Kirik, oh, there's a much different level of understanding of range in this. You look at the winging shots coming from Makajiev that are miles away from connecting, whereas look at that stepping in and causing damage is Jeroen. Makajiev, as much as, as much as anything else, is trying to control the distance to try and lure his opponent in where he can entangle his arms, maybe pull guard, try and win the fight from there, or get his opponent to overextend, get into those hips, take him down with a leg trip. Winging hooks once again from Makajiev. It's just cleaner work from Jeroen right now. Jeroen oh. slightly buckled the leg there, and Jeroen's doing a good job of, of keeping his back from the cage. He's always occupying that center, landing his strikes, bit of lateral movement, so that he's not leaving himself vulnerable to the takedown from Makhachev. And that lead leg is the primary target in this second round of this three-round fight. Which also takes the pop out of the takedown, because you can't drop down on it for the double. Oh, now his back's against the cage. Will Makaji have used this as an opportunity, but no. Once again in the center. Oh, he got clipped. There's weapons. Oh, in nice mixed head movement. Sorry. No, my mistake. I tripped over you there. Sorry. There's weapons in mixed martial arts, Kirik, that can help you set up takedowns like jabs like uh, co certain combinations that get you closer to your opponent and we're just not seeing that from Makajiev at the minute. The simplest way to take down an opponent in mixed martial arts is to throw a one-two at him in order to coax him into throwing a one-two at you. It's impossible to place your hips to stop a double leg and at the same time strike effectively. Ooh. I don't believe however the double leg is Makajiev's favored way of getting down to the ground. He likes to entangle the arms with his own, go for a leg trip. Oh, that left straight is starting to find a little bit of a home on the chin of Makaziev. When you look at the difference in, in shot choice, Makaziev is throwing winging hooks, whereas there is a much more direct approach coming from Giroud and a much more successful one in that second round. Oof. Very, very deep waters now from Makaziev. 
here we have Daoud Shahayev in there with his training partner, his friend. Trying to muster him up, but let's talk about some of the action, Phil. And there you see just some of the work. The kicks are coming from behind the punches. Everything's sequential. Nothing's thrown just for the sake of winging punches. Targeted the leg for a little bit, which I think was very intelligent. And it'll be interesting to see just how quickly Makajiev gets up because there has been a little bit of controversy around him not getting up quickly off the cage and fights have been stopped in that fashion. And when you look at just the physics of their choices of weapon, Kirik, those winging shots of Makajiev not being set up, they, they take a lot longer to get than those straight shots of Giroud. And Giroud is landing on the money. His accuracy is there as well. They do. There's physics and defense as well. The backward movement that Makajiev is showing is taking the sting off of those shots that are coming in. A shot that's half as strong, if it catches the opponent moving in at the right time, can take you out. Whereas if the opponent's moving away, it's not. So Makajiev is using some physics and those big uh, winging shots, I believe, are more to keep his opponent from doing anything. Keep his opponent away at, after he's thrown his combination. So we are at our final five minutes of this main event here on Brave 48. Makajiev in the blue corner taking on Giroud oh, in the that's red. Oh, big knee. Solid knee. Gentlemen, Broly has been told by his corner to turn it up and he's clearly listened to him. And it is just a, a much more measured clinical approach, approach from Giroud. It's a kickboxing approach pretty much at the minute. It's such a... Uh, yeah, that's his wheelhouse. This yeah. is where he does a lot of his best work. Must be said, he does also have six wins via decision, so he is acclimated to going the, the distance in a fight. And you can hear that. You can hear Dao Shakaev saying, "You have one round to win this one round." And now, just three minutes fifty seconds of that round for Makhachev. Makhachev, for me, is lacking just a little bit of urgency, and that could be borne out of fatigue. I was going to say that, that that is what is needed now, some sort of urgency to, to make something happen. It's it's great he's not taking too much damage off the back of that, that getting dropped in the first round. It's great he's still in this fight, but to make it happen, to, make, to take the victory, he needs mm -hmm. to do something and do something quick. On the balance of power, it, it does feel like Jerund is winning this fight so far. We talk about control... Kira, we got, sorry, we talk about damage, but at the minute, just in control is Jeroen. He's having it all his own way. Seems to be very much one-way traffic. It is. He has not been able to inflict much damage with it, though, but there's no question in my mind, for what it's worth, that he is ahead two rounds to zero at this point. Final three minutes. Always on the back foot. Makajiev has got to do something. Got to find the fire from somewhere. He's looking to counter, which I, I don't think is the right game plan here. Not if you are looking to uh, to switch the tide of momentum, Phil. Go oh, just close there with the head kick. And I think Jerund is so good at getting out of the space after he lands the shots. That was a great one, too. That it's going to be very, very difficult for Makajiev to get the takedown. Oh, another oh. shot right down the pipe. What I would like to see Makajiev do is punch his way into a takedown. Use those big shots to try and get some sort of connection. And then he's got an uphill struggle still, Kirik, because the, the clock's against him to get a submission within two minutes against a high-level fighter like Giroud, and that's very difficult. This is not a fighter who can be taken down and tapped out quickly, and it's not a fighter who's out of condition. It's much easier to get a knockout from standing or submission from the ground when a fighter is exhausted. You are not looking at an exhausted fighter in Elias June. Fighting at his own pace, very happy at his own range as well, Phil. And this is going to be a huge fair then. The cap if he's to get this win against somebody who is as infamously dangerous on the ground as Makajiev, especially having spent a little bit of time with him. There's oh, a little bit of urgency. The this is deep. Oh, I don't this know. This is deep. Oh, Makajiev has got to fight those hands. Can he? He's tapping. He's, he's tapping. He's tapping. Oh, no. No. Giroud claims the victory again by guillotine. A stunning.
debut for the Frenchman. That is his eighth win, and how fitting is it that the Frenchman has his eighth win via guillotine? <laughs> that is absolutely <laughs> wonderful. Incredible performance. A submission specialist was submitted in front of our eyes. That is absolutely huge. Becoming only the third man to submit Abdul Rahman Makhachiev. So, so in control through those rounds and then once that opportunity opened up dived on the neck phil talk us through this this was he sprawled wonderfully he's got an incredible grip on him as we know locks up the guillotine guard and from there it was good night what a squeeze this young man must have and that's the arm in guillotine as well and it doesn't even look like he has the position deep enough from where we can see here there we have it, and you'll just see the right hand starting to tap here underneath. You get the same thing at Phil with strikes. A fighter like Mike Tyson can hit you in the middle of the forehead. There's yeah. no button there, but it puts you out. The same thing can happen with submissions. If you have extraordinary power, like Elias June has, even an imperfectly placed guillotine can cause what you see right here, which is, as I said, a submission specialist submitting. And we saw a fantastic finish there, Phil, but the composure, the control, just the execution of a perfect game plan, that's what we saw as well with this exactly. debut. Exactly, the, the first round, initiate as much damage as you can, survive on the ground for a little bit. Second round, purely striking, turn it into a kickboxing match. Third round, use your striking to force the takedown. Use the takedown to get your most value submission. Take the win, beautiful. It was game plan by numbers. So we are set to announce our main event. Let's hand it for one more time to that man, Carlos Kramer. All right, Brave Nation, what an incredible way to finish our historic Brave 48 Arabian Night. This main event comes to a dramatic close at three minutes and 34 seconds of the third round. Your winner by guillotine, Elias Broly June. Elias Jeroen, a successful debut, not just a debut, but as the main event here at Brave 48. What a fantastic night of fights. What a way to finish it off as well, Phil, and what a star we have on our hands in Elias Jeroen. Yeah, absolutely huge, and what this young man could potentially do moving forward in the stacked lightweight division. He may have just announced himself as a contender. There's a multitude of fights I would love to see this young man engage in. You have the likes of Kuban Ichbek, you have our champion Amin Ayub, you have the likes of Luan Miao Santiago. Yes, he's competing at 165. His next fight is traditionally uh, a 155 fighter. Oh, what about a fight with Sam Patterson? <laughs> Wouldn't that be something Could special? You stop it, everyone oh. you are saying. I am not into. They are, and that's the beauty of his style, Kirik. He matches up well against everyone because he is such a complete mixed martial artist. And because he's so intelligent. I, I've seen physically gifted fighters who are highly trained, but they don't have the kind of intelligence that we saw in there, and they don't get these kind of outcomes against an incredibly dangerous opponent. And we are looking now at the clean work here. Phil, just talk us through a little bit of this. Well, what he did beautifully, he didn't just sprawl back with the hips. He popped the hips forward, creating a block for his opponent to crash into, grabbed the neck, and then boom, beautiful submission finish. You could see in his eyes as well, Kieran. He knew he had this. He just had to hold on to that squeeze. And patience. Patience is not something you usually attest to as far as a, uh, a characteristic in, in, uh, in victory. But that's what he needed, and that's what he executed. He was patient, waited for the opening, took the, uh, the neck. Part of the reason he was able to do this is because he did back off in his intensity a little bit, and he was successful. And we look there, Vilias Jeroen, his hand was raised high. That moment is come true. Thank you. 
know I'm intelligent We don't do nothing, no, not for the hell of it There gotta be some sort of benefit You gotta show me it's evident Ain't got my foot on no break We do whatever it takes Don't you wait on mistakes Look how we started, we pick up the pace Hey, we pick up the pace now Got my foot on no breaks now This is my fan now, so say it loud Starting, it's never half hearted. The build a foundation, yeah, it's solid, it's solid. I am really been waiting for. This is the moment that I have been saving for. You see all these people and who they've been waving for? It's the position that I have been aiming for. Hey, we pick up the pace now. Got no foot on no brakes now. This is my fan now, so say it loud. I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm ready. Lights are bright now, throw the confetti. For the flare with a rare 
hustle Live a life without a care, I'm prepared for trouble We don't respect excuses, all we respect is muscle Either it's kill or be killed, you don't want no trouble I got a knack for the flare, with a rare hustle Live a life without a care, I'm prepared for trouble We don't respect excuses, all we respect is muscle Either it's kill or be killed, you don't want no trouble my life is like a video, people pointing at ego Tossing cake to haters, I'm a baker, planning plenty dough Even when it's moving slow, I just keep on planning up Like my lady straight, boy, look at her, even proof for self Do it on your own terms, make them second guess you When they all come calling, you put them in your rear view The crooked cops, their people look dirty The streets is trouble, welcome to that jungle I got a knack for the flare with a rare hustle Living life without a care, I'm prepared for trouble We don't respect excuses, all we respect is muscle Either it's kill or be killed, you don't want no trouble I got a knack for the flare with a rare hustle Living life without a care, I'm prepared for trouble We don't respect excuses, all we respect is muscle Either it's kill or be killed you don't want no trouble Ducking the strings, the bobbing and weaving Living the rules, the boys is cheating Everybody wanna go at the king The bullets bounce off your boy like a trampoline I got money in Italy I got people in New Orleans Escobar to the whole thing But my life is made of in I'm the king of the jungle, the lion live inside, boy, but I'm humble I bring the whole squad for the rumble, I chill on the throne, my hitters is on you They want the money, they want the shine, but they don't really wanna put it in town The caps is crooked, the people are dirty, the streets is trouble Boy, this is a jungle No trouble.